Hey guys welcome back to the channel this is a story about what if Deku brought everyone to watch alternate versions of himself part 1. If you guys enjoy this what if and want to see part 2 comment down below and let me know before I start please do support for more awesome content. And leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and also share this video with your friends and check out the description in my playlist so let's start the video. It was an ordinary day in the school UA. The students have just finished their classes as they went back to relax in their dorms. But both hero courses decided to have a sleepover in the dorms of 1A, since 1B's homeroom teacher was more relaxed, and would allow his students to do something like this. Once they got permission, they went to 1A dorms where they were greeted by their homeroom teacher. Aizawa sighed. Listen Vlad's problem children, honestly I couldn't care less about what you do. Just keep it down. Tomorrow's a weekend. And I prefer to sleep not stay up because you have a howler monkey that drank a ton of energy drinks. He finished saying the last part as he eyed Monoma who deflated in Ibarra's binding since he tried to stop them only for the religious girl to tie him up and dragged him here. Aizawa didn't like the idea, but it wasn't a bad idea to let them blow some steam every once in a while. Kendo said, don't worry sir, if he tries anything, I'll knock him out. The nighttime hero looked at her as he said darkly, I'll take you up for your word, cause if you don't, believe me when I say you'll wish that the LOV turns into a Namu after the training I will put you through. His eyes flashed red, as Kendo hugged Satsuna in fear of whatever their rival class teacher was preparing for her if she failed. The man then walked away. As Kendo looked at the blonde boy, Monoma, I swear if you do anything, I will put you through so much pain that you'll forget your name, got it. The boy nodded so quickly that his head seemed like it's about to fall off his body. He knew that Kendo meant her threat. Great she now looked at dorms, as she pushed the doors open saying, Yeah Momo, we're here. They looked and saw that the entire class of Wana was there waiting for them. Even Bakugo though the latter was tied up with Ciro's tapes and was put in an ice cage to prevent him from escaping with Todoroki fixing it every time it began to melt. Kendo laughed as she asked Momo, Do the ice prison have room for one more inmate? She pointed toward Monoma who was probably refusing to share the same cell with a student of one. Momo nodded as she went to the ice prison, opened the ice door, and allowed Ibarra to throw the blonde boy next to Bakugo who glared at him, with the other blonde returning it with the same intensity if not more. The night went on as everyone was having fun and talking with each other. Boys were playing video games, girls were talking about their crushes, and all of them played truth and dare. The next morning everyone woke up after a good night's sleep only to see that they were in a void of nothing. The first to point out that was Izuku who said, Guys, is it only me, or are we only in a void of some sort? Momo woke up next only to notice this same. I don't think so unless we're having some kind of mass hallucination, but that's not the case since I'm sure that cake Sato made didn't have Komori's mushrooms in them. The girl, who was mentioned, blushed a little when she remembered an accident where she put some experimental mushrooms into the pizza she was making. Let's say that everyone was thankful that no one without a steel quirk jumped off the third floor. Bakugo who woke noticed that he wasn't in tape anymore jumped up asking, What the fuck is happening here? What did you do you shitty extras? He finished as he pointed his finger toward class 1B. Monoma who was out of his bindings then said, Why are you accusing us? It's usually you class and nutcases that attract trouble. A raspy voice then echoed, Can you be quiet? I'm trying to sleep. Bakugo and Izuku turned to see Shigaraki spread on the ground with a red blanket. Both of them readied themselves for combat, but their quirks didn't activate. What did you do to my quirk, you bastard? Bakugo then yelled demanding an explanation. Bakugo, calm down so we can understand what's happening. Aizawa said as he tried to use his quirk, but nothing happened. He then looked at the LOV members who were all present even all for one was present. That means a being of stronger power brought them here. He looked around and saw all the teachers were there with All Might being held back by present Mike and Midnight for attacking All for One. There were also some mothers of his students, some heroes, seven individuals who he didn't know, some villains, Iri, Koda, the Big Three, Mei, Shinso, Shoto's siblings, and Sir Nidai, wonderful the dead were coming back, he thought. All for One then looked at All Might saying to the other teachers, let him come here, it's not like I can do much damage, I can't access my quirks, he then looked at All Might saying. But don't you want to catch up with your master? He said as he pointed into a certain direction. All Might then looked and saw Nana Shimura laying down on the ground as she groaned rubbing her head from the pain. As she asked, what in the world just happened? She was quickly tackled by All Might into a hug who was crying from happiness. Master, you're alive. The blonde hero cried as the other users of One for All looked in shock at what was happening. The first user looked at his brother who shrugged telling him this wasn't his doing the woman confused said in shock. Huh, I guess I'm alive, aren't I? I wouldn't say alive more like in limbo for the current state. A familiar voice echoed throughout the void. Everyone looked up only to see Midoriya floating in the air. This caused mixed reactions as they didn't know that Midoriya could do this until Izuku spoke up. Guys, I'm still down here. 
He said but then added, I think at least. Everyone calm down so I can explain everything. Everyone now looked at the floating Izuku as he said, for starters, you can call me Discord by my hero name in my world or what's left of it that is. See this void that was my universe before it went out. Gasps echoed even a foe was shocked that someone managed to destroy the universe. Don't worry it happened naturally. I calculate that it will return back about 3 billion years later. Mr. Discord, your Raka called out. Can you tell me why you look like Deku? All right. My good friend Discord disappeared before appearing down beside them as he began his explanation. You see I am Izuku Midoriya, or at least a version of him. In my world, the entity of chaos tried to possess me to try and escape his punishment, but he failed and I managed to take his powers. I was thought to be quirkless till I was 15 to which I did something that activated my powers. All Might was there and offered me his power, and before you ask, a brief history of a foe and Ofo was transferred into everyone's head. Good, save your questions for later, and for someone who actually cares. I refused because the previous chaos spirit warned me that I would die. Discord went on to explain what happened in his world from his training to his time in UA, his marriage with his world's version of Pony, the war with LOV, and finally the end of the universe. Nina was the first to break from her shock as she looked at Pony who was blushing like crazy and she said, Damn Pony, I didn't know you have in you, girl, to actually marry the cinnamon roll of our class. It must have been an experience. The horse girl began to mumble something in English, but was shocked when Ibarra whacked her saying. Language the girl was shocked that the vine girl actually understood her given that English was her worst subject. But then Discord said, yeah, and here I made it so that everyone gets to understand everyone. The girl blushed as her friend understood what she said. Nezu looked at the chaos user, before asking the entity that brought them here, young Midoriya. He stopped for a moment remembering that Izuku is older than a foe so he restarted, Mr. Discord, do you care to explain why you brought us here? The entity appeared before him, and said, why does anyone do anything? He then took a dramatic pose. Sheer absolute boredom Jiru then said, you seriously brought us here because you're bored. Yes he started, but believe me, you'll have a blast because today you'll be granted the experience of traveling through the Decuverse. All the individuals were shocked that they will be watching different versions of their friend. It was Iri who was brave, and stood up asking, does that mean I will see different versions of Mr. Deku save me? The being nodded his head as he gave Iri a candy apple along with Koda. Aizawa then said, Decuverse, like do you mean you will show us different versions of Problem Child? He looked at Discord who nodded his head. The hero then asked, can I get my sleeping bag, so I can protect myself from Emmy? Aizawa said pointing to Ms. Joke who was trying to hug him. Aizawa's wish was granted, and he slept in his sleeping bag. Izuku then said, me, can I ask a question? He just needed to know something that irked him. Shoot Discord replied already knowing what his question is. You said different versions of me, so does that. He was cut off when Discord said, Me, expelled Dekus, married Deku, quirkless hero Deku, quickered Izuku, superpowered Deku not by quirks like me, villain Deku, vigilante Deku, Deku at the beginning of quirks, no quirk universe Deku. In other words it's going to be quite the dozy. He finished shocking Izuku with how many versions of himself were out there, but he was slightly irked by the idea that there were villain versions of himself. He gulped as he saw his friends looking at him so he said, So guys are you ready? Izuku, is it true that you have All Might's quirk? Uraraka asked him. Izuku was now afraid that his friends will hate him because they discovered his secret. He nodded his head, but he was shocked when Achako said, That's so awesome, Deku. To have, All Might acknowledge you that he gave you his quirk. That's so cool. Todoroki then stood in front of him, and he said, So does that mean that you're All Might's secret love child? This caused a huge silence to float as Shoto's mom slapped her forehead while Dabai was laughing his head off with Shoto's sibling. Izuku's sweat dropped. No, he gave me his quirk. He didn't marry my mom. Before anyone can say anything Discord then said, All right, I know all of you want to say how manly Izuku is, how cool he is to have All Might give him his quirk, but you have to know that everything that happens here will be forgotten, so it doesn't cause disturbance to the stream of time. This made Takoyami say, Revelry in the dark. Discord looked at him, and said, Nice song, but stop referencing it for everything, or I swear I will pop a world where you're a girl, and you're in a relationship. This made the raven-headed boy's feathers ruffle his equivalent of blushing. Alright now that everything is taken care of, shall we put this show on the road? Discord asked. A screen then appeared as Discord said, Let the roulette begin. He said as the screen showed the names of different worlds appear on it. But finally, it landed on one expelled Izuku Aizawa cringed as he said, I have a seriously bad feeling about this. After the explanation of a foe and Ofo was transported for him, he felt like an absolute douchebag for the way he treated his student during the quirk apprehension test. And by the name of this world it means that Izuku's finger trick didn't impress that version of himself. 
He only hoped that Shota let him down easily and didn't berate him too much. Discord then said, get ready, here it begins. The world suddenly changed and it was now on the field where Aizawa made his test. All when a student shivered remembering this day causing it was the scariest moment of their lives. And now Momo was afraid as she knew from this world that Aizawa was serious about the whole expelling thing. It showed the usual thing that happened with 1A. Bakugo throwing the ball, Mina saying it is fun, the tests, and finally Izuku's ball throw. Izuku stood there clutching his finger, as he said with a victorious smile, Sensei, I'm still standing. The boy had tears in his eyes. Was it out of fear? Or happiness? Aizawa couldn't tell. But he knew one thing. The boy failed the objective he gave him which was to control his quirk without hurting himself. What a waste of a good quirk. Why are smiling as if you've made the find of the century? He said to Izuku making the smile drop. I asked you to show me that you can control your quirk, but you only showed me that you can limit the damage. Did you honestly think that this will save? Aizawa slapped his forehead as he said, if you want to expel him then do it. No need to belittle him and destroy him. Vlad then said, yeah, I kinda agree that this is taking it over the top. And this is the reason I read my students' files before I enter the classroom. Tell me, is it a waste now? The blood hero said with a smirk at the nighttime hero who groaned knowing that he will have to change his ways to avoid things like these in the future. Discord made a note to put this into Aizawa's head to change his methods later on. But, I'm still standing. Izuku was cut off by Aizawa's scarf wrapping around him, so what? Tell me, can you redo the rest of the exams now? Izuku Midoriya. In my entire history of teaching I never saw anyone who was so arrogant that he thought that they don't need to train their quirk. You are a disgrace to every person standing here. You don't deserve to be a hero. And I will make it my personal mission to blacklist you from every hero's school possible because if you neglected training your quirk, you will neglect hero training and only become a liability in the field. Having a heroic spirit is something, but you don't have the will, control, or even the demeanor to back it up, so go home, you're expelled. Aizawa's declaration was followed by Bakugo's laughter. Silence was now ringing in the area both in that world and among its viewers. Everyone was shocked that Aizawa would say something like this, or that he'll promise to destroy somebody's future because he thinks he isn't serious about being a hero. Aibara then said, Dear Lord, I heard some of Aizawa-sensei's methods were a bit extreme, but this is taking it a bit too much. Tell me about it. Vlad said shocked that his colleague could be capable of such cruelty. He himself has expelled students from before, but it was always due to behavioral issues and disrespect, but this version of Aizawa takes the cake for being cruel. He knows the hero world is not all sunshine and rainbow, but there is no need to be that cruel. Why would Aizawa-sensei say such horrible things to Midoriya? Toru asked, even though she wasn't a close friend of his, the girl could say that she respected his work ethic and how he constantly trains to further improve his quirk. It was truly inspiring. Aizawa-sensei the girl looked at their homeroom teacher with concern. The man looked like he had just seen a ghost in front of him. She was sure after learning the truth about Izuku's power, that her teacher must feel horrible for not letting him explain. The man in question had his eyes wide as he looked at that version of himself not believing the amount of hatred and malice that dripped with every word he spoke. He finally spoke up. How illogical of that version of me. So, you also see it. Discord asked to see the man nod his head from his sleeping bag. Iri then said, What are talking about Mr. Deku? Well, you see Eri, Discord began to speak. Aizawa really dislikes All Might, and when I say dislike him I mean really dislikes. So that world, Aizawa saw that myself have a similar power to All Might, and he allowed himself to project all his hatred on him. He then stopped for a moment before adding, this one did the same, but he was able to control it and not allow it to cloud his judgment. A foe then raised his hand and got his answer before he asked his question. No, he didn't join you guys, but you'll see other worlds where you got Ofa in a very easy way. The man smiled. But All Might shivered with the previous users of Ofa and Izuku knowing that there are worlds where a foe have Ofa. Izuku then looked at his teacher who had a face of guilt, so he went to him and said, It's not your fault, Aizawa-sensei. You couldn't have known about this. The man smiles at his student, before looking back at the scene. Izuku looked at the man with pain in his eyes as he tried to say something, but he couldn't. Aizawa then said, Well, you heard me. Beat it. I have other tests to finish. On the side of the field, All Might was clutching the wall so tightly that it almost broke from the pressure. The man was past his patience point. He was now ready to go and Texas smash that person to Saturn's rings for the way he was treating his successor. To think that a teacher would bow so low, make it his personal mission to blacklist him. Huh, that won't happen unless I have something to say about it All Might thought. He was about to go and confront them, but a voice spoke up in Izuku's defense. You can't expel him. He's a true hero. Aizawa, All Might, Izuku, and the other students all looked at Achako. Mina and Toru smiled as they said, Well, 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 it seems even in there you seem to have a crush on Midori. The gravity girl then began to float in embarrassment as she saw that version of herself put everything on the line for her friend with her friends teasing her. 
The other girls then began to tease her till Discord said, I don't know what you're teasing her about. I mean there are many worlds where every one of you is either a couple with him, or are married to him and have children from him, even female version of some of the males. I mean during my time I saw a little of female Todoroki, Bakugo, and even Kirishima married to him, said boys all blushed with Bakugo growling like an animal waiting to be released. They all turn back to the scene to what else happened. Aizawa smiles darkly at Achako as he asks, and oh please, do tell me why I can't expel him. The girl shivered under the man's gaze, but steeled herself as she said, because he's a true hero. He risked his life to save me when nobody did. This caused Ida to clutch his fist remembering how he ran away that day. Dot 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 if it wasn't from him that day, I would have been horribly injured for life or dead at worst. But he has no control. The teacher was shocked when the girl cut him off. And that's why we are here to learn how to control our quirks. You're just making excuses to expel him. And I won't stand for it. The teacher having enough of this said, You're Raka, do you want me to expel you? The girl then said, No, don't. Everyone, except the villains, was shocked at how Achako backed down quickly. But Discord then said, Don't count your chickens yet. You need to be patient. Continue watching and then judge. Everyone nodded their heads and continued to watch to see what Discord was talking about. Achako then continued saying, Because there's no need for it. I'm going to leave UA. All the hero students were shocked at how Achako quit UA just for someone she believed in. Izuku himself looked at the scene with guilt as he felt that he was responsible in that world for the destruction of his friend's dreams. Achako saw this and quickly went to his side and held his hand saying, Don't think about it, Deku. That version of myself made her choices for the thing she believes in, so this isn't your fault. Don't go blaming yourself. The boy could only nod as he blushed from the hand contact. It was then that Ida stepped in saying, You're Raka, I understand what happened, but don't anything rash. He was cut off by the girl, Ida, my parents always told me to do what I think is right. So today, I'm going to stick with my gut and do what it tells me is right. The boy shocked stepped back as he said, I just hope you are doing the right thing. Ida was shocked at her statement. Deep down, he knew she was right. No one was supposed to go through this public hazing. It was like their teacher had it for Midoriya from the start. Now that he thinks about it, it seemed that Izuku's scores were seriously low even lower than some of the students who were less fit than he was. Achako then stalked forward grabbing Izuku's hand and said, Come one, Deku. Let's go. We have hero schools to sign in them. She then dragged him away leaving a very confused Aizawa wondering how this happened for a moment before shrugging and saying, Anyone else wants to humor her craziness? When no one answered, he said, Good. Let those two be a lesson on who can't become a hero. Those who don't train their quirks, and those who are here to be friends. Now, let's get back to the tests. Seriously, you think that if a hero tried to form friendships they are doomed to fail? Midnight asked before adding, Shouta, wasn't your friendship with both Hizashi and Aburo that lead you to become the hero that you are today? What? Toru asked shocked. Mr. Friends are in the way of heroics actually became a hero because he had friends. She then looked at her teacher's sleeping form and yelled, I call hypocrisy Aizawa Sensei. The man looked at her from his sleeping bag and glared. Why don't we talk about this when we get back, Haker? I'm sure I would be more than happy to explain my point of view and make it clearer to you. The tone he used made the girl shiver knowing that this promised more horrific training. She then back paddled saying, No need to. I think I heard wrong. Continue the good work sensei. The hero then looked away from her, as she sighed with Tsuyu saying, Nice save. He almost got you there. Back in the classroom, Achako came back from talking with her parents and telling them what happened. She half expected them to be mad at her, but she was shocked when they praised telling her that they were proud of her for making what she thought was the right decision. Plus, they told her that UA has a refund policy for students who are expelled or withdraw, so no harm was done. Achako's father then said, Damn right, I would be proud of her for following her own sense of justice. This means that she's going to be a great hero. The girl could only hug her father in happiness. Achako sat in front of Izuku who was slowly putting his stuff in his bag after returning from recovery girl's office. She looked at him and smiled saying, Deku, please don't look sad. I'm sure that any hero school out there would want you. The boy looked at her and asked, Why? What do you mean why? Why did you do this? Why did you throw your dream away from me? The boy shouted shocking her, He's right, you know. In my entire life, I was nothing but a worthless waste of space. And now that I have a quirk, I am still that same worthless nobody that can't save anyone's life even if it depended on it. So why did you sacrifice everything for someone so worthless like? The boy was caught off when he felt something slap his cheek. Shigaraki then cringed as he said, Ouch, that's definitely gonna hurt in the morning. This caused the girl who did it to blush heavily as she began to float away with Tsuyu using her tongue as an anchor to hold her from floating into the abyss. Ida then said, Though that was an unorthodox way of doing things, good work Yuraka that really snapped him out of it. Said girl from her floating position lifted a thumbs up to the boy who was blissfully unaware of how horrible she felt right now. Stop. 
Don't ever say that ever again. You are not worthless. You are not a nobody. And most importantly you're a hero. My hero. When everybody ran away that day, you were the only one who walked to save. So that makes you a hero in my books unlike what that bully said. The boy looked at her as tears began to flow from his face. The girl quickly embraced him in a hug blushing heavily. But she patted his head saying, It's alright, let it all out. I promise we're going to be the world's greatest heroes. Deku the boy then pulled away red-faced although he had a small smile as he wiped his tears away. Thank you Araka, he then added, but could you stop calling Deku? The girl was confused at the request as she asked, but isn't that your name? She could have sworn that Mr. Exploding Pants called him Deku when he was expelled. A foe then said, really, I'm sure everyone knows that the name means useless. This made the girl blush as she said, I thought it meant Dekaru like you can do it. The girl explained herself to the 200-year-old villain ignoring Bekugo who was pissed off after being called Mr. Exploding Pants. Before asking, and why am I speaking to you so casually as if you're my friend? This made even the villain raise an eyebrow or he would if he still had them. He looked around to see various villains sitting around with heroes and talking with them and discussing their opinions about what they were saying. He looked up only to see Discord smiling. So I assume you made some changes here so that we can treat each other casually without the fear of us trying to rip each other apart. The Entity of Chaos only gave him a thumbs up. Now, let's continue, he said as he pointed to the scene. No, not really. The boy continued to wipe his tears as he said, It's a name that Kakan made for me. It actually means that I'm useless and worthless. The girl looked in confusion thinking about this Kakan person. But she concluded that he must be Mr. Exploding Pants. She then quickly apologized saying, I'm really sorry. I didn't mean it that way. I thought I meant Dekaru. It just gives off a you can do it vibe, if you know what I mean. The boy's eyes widened as the girl now gave him a positive meaning to that damn nickname that have haunted him from childhood. He then smiled at her saying, You know what I don't mind you calling me that. It sounds better coming from you. The girl blushed as she looked away from embarrassment. A cough then drew both their attention. So that's how you stopped feeling annoyed whenever I called you by that name. And here I thought you grew in it and owned it. Turns out, you needed a girl. Back Hugo was cut off. In some worlds, you date her. This made Yuraka cry knowing that some versions of herself date Bakugo with the other girls counseling her. Bakugo only scoffed as he looked away. Achako was now looking at an old bony man who looked like he hadn't eaten in years. The man walked inside the room and introduced himself. My name is Tashainiri Yagi and I was young Midoriya's personal trainer by the request of All Might himself. The girl was shocked by the fact that All Might himself supervised Izuku's training while the boy was shocked that he learned All Might's real name. My employer saw what happened earlier. And he was truly disgusted by the way a racer had acted. His behavior was neither that of a hero or a teacher. He tried to change Aizawa's decision. But alas there are things even the number one hero can't do. He said making Yuraka sad. But he carried on. But he was impressed by your spirit young Yuraka, And how you stood up for what you thought was right. So he told me to send both of you an offer. This made the girl giddy with joy as both she and Izuku nodded their heads before Tashainiri explained his offer. The girl then scratched her head saying. I wonder what the offer might be. I mean this all might, so he might be planning on taking us to another highly known school such as Shaiksu, or somewhere else. But that doesn't solve the problem of the black mark on Deku's record. Momo then said, well, he's the number one hero after all. I mean he could just have taken you both under his wing and helped till you got your provisional hero license. I mean it's not the first time a hero was a sidekick without having any formal education. This made both Izuku and Achako sparkle in happiness since being All Might's sidekicks sounded like the coolest thing ever. Aizawa then looked at a smiling All Might and said, I blame you for the eventual death of Izuku and Achako of that world if you do decide and take them under your wing given your state. I don't agree with the actions of my alternate self, however, taking them under your wing is an idea that's ten times even worse than what I did. All Might wanted to scoff, but Aizawa was right. In his state, if that version of himself took them under his wing, they would have ended up dead or worse. Discord then said, If you're all done talking, how about you all look back at the scene cause this is where the story is happening. The others then looked back at the scene as it began to shift and change leaving everyone thinking where is it going to right now. If you told Achako a week ago that she would have the number hero himself in her home praising her and offering her parents a one in a time opportunity for her hero education, she would have called you a nut job. If you told her that the number hero was pulling all the strings he has in the USA to give her and her friend Deku a full scholarship in one of the most prestigious hero schools in the country Xavier's School for Gifted Youngsters, she would have thrown you into the orbit since you were being too cruel to her. Now regarding the scholarship, at first her parents refused saying that they couldn't afford it, but All Might said that he was will take care of everything regarding the expenses, and also gave her parents a bunch of contacts to which he was going to recommend their company for when he heard their financial struggles. 
But right now she couldn't believe it. She was standing in Denver airport with Deku waiting for All Might's biggest fan in the USA to pick them up. And that would be it was the number one hero in the country star and stride. She looked at her friend who was beaming with joy, for two reasons, he was meeting a hero, a famous one at that, and he finally learned how to control his quirk. It only took conservation about machinery in her parents' company and orange juice of all things for him to figure it out. She literally couldn't stop laughing when he compared himself to an orange juice. Laughter filled the area, as Izuku tried to melt into the ground. Even All Might was so distracted that he actually held AFO for support as he said, Young Midoriya, you truly are quite funny. He then regained himself saying, Wait a minute, why didn't I go with him? Discord then answered, Because you had a feeling that if you left Japan something bad was going to happen, and good thing you didn't. All Might nodded clearly seeing that this version of himself knew that he needed to stay, so he entrusted his pupil to Star and Stride. He then asked, Did young Midoriya succeed? Discord nodded, and held a huge ten sign signaling him that everything went okay with Izuku. Ada then tried to ask something, but was cut short, yes, albeit barely, if it wasn't for Todoroki showing on time and Stain encouraging him to use his fire quirk. Ada breathed a sigh of relief while Shoto seemed kinda out of it since it was Stain who inspired him to use his fire. Discord then added, then again, you did manage to survive the same events albeit also barely, this time with some permanent scars, he said as he looked at Tsuyu who got the message. They waited at the airport for around half an hour before finally, a woman with blonde hair accompanied by a man with green curly hair came. Izuku saw them and smiled. He then began crying as he hugged the green-haired man, who hugged him back saying, Hi there, champ. Ready to go to school. And what happened to stop being a crybaby? The boy looked at him and said, I'm sorry, dad. I just missed you so much. Achako on the side smiled at the family reunion. Izuku's dad then noticed her and smirked. Izuku, is that the beautiful girl that stood up to you when Eraserhead tried to single you out? The boy blushed as did Achako, while Hasahi laughed at their misery only to be whacked by the blonde woman who said in English, Hasahi, you're a grown man, and yet you can't act like it. Said man then pouted and looked away. Izuku then dared himself to ask, excuse me, but are you? The woman smiled as she said, yes, I'm America's number one hero star in Stripe. My name is Kathleen Bate. It's nice to meet both of you. From now on, I'll be personally training you both on behalf of All Might. She then winked at Izuku signaling to him that she also knew about OFA. She carried their bags and said, well let's go. Sure All Might managed to score a full scholarship for both of you, but that doesn't mean you don't have to train and slack off. Xavier's school isn't for the weak-hearted, so are you up to the challenge? Both of them smiled as they said, yes ma'am. And with that, a new chapter in their life began. Discord then looked at the audience and said, so what do you think? Second universe so what do you think? Discord asked as he summoned for himself and Nezu two smoothies out of nowhere and two chairs to lounge on. Izuku answered him. Well, it seems interesting seeing this world. I mean seeing myself expelled was shocking. But the events that happened after it was quite astounding. But that begs the question, does this still happen in other worlds? Or do I for example become a vigilante? Or as a foe said, do I join the villain side because I feel mistreated by the hero community? And you said that there are versions of me with quirks? Does Aizawa sensei mess up their scores as he did with me? Or does he only do it with me or versions of myself that have a weak quirk or quirkless? The last questions made Eraserhead pop out of his bag as he mentally said, he knew. The questions continued to stream on, but he was finally silenced by a huge gush of water from a power hose courtesy of Discord who simply said, so this how it feels to be on the giving end of it. He looked at the soaked boy and said, it depends on the condition. For example, if you were quirkless, there is a higher chance that the entire class will be expelled than you because Aizawa knows that you only manage to enter the hero course through your skills. That is always accompanied by the fact that doesn't allow his prejudice affect his judgment and he expels for being quirkless. And from there you go on different paths, joining Stain. This made Ada pale knowing what damage Izuku's notebooks will do in Stain's hands. Become a vigilante, join the LOV, this made Shigaraki smile knowing that some versions of the golden boy joined them. Become a police officer like Might said since you finally lost hope. Or simply killing yourself for having your dream snatched from you without even been given a chance to prove yourself. The last statement made Aizawa pale. Momo then said, That's quite interesting, and we're only talking about the things that may come to mind. She then shook her before looking at Izuku saying, and Izuku what do you mean when you said that Aizawa sensei messed up your scores? This caught everyone's attention. The boy blinked before saying, you didn't know. I thought everyone knew at this point that sensei kinda messed up my scores to expel me. I am and still a more fit than mine to Jiro, Kaminari, and Heikir, so it was odd that I scored lower than them. He then turned to the mentioned four and said, no offense, guys. They simply waved their hands agreeing with him that he was more fit than they were. 
also wondering how he got last in the test. Kendo then commented, But I don't think that your teacher would sabotage, Izuku. She then looked at the sleep-deprived hero and asked, Isn't that right, sensei? The hero didn't answer making some of the students feel uneasy. He finally looked at Izuku. If you knew that I was sabotaging you, this made Kendo's eyes go wide along with everyone else with Shigaraki chuckling and saying something about how heroes are corrupted. Why didn't you say anything? Easy, what would have that done? Izuku replied before adding, I mean my entire life my teachers were always signaling me out. The moment you started giving subtle looks of anger, and how I got 7, 12 on the running test though I passed only after a couple of moments after Kakin really gave you out. The thing that really exposed it was the grip strength test since I found mine was impossibly hard. But when I carried the one Shoji and a couple of others used, they were easier. From that moment on, I knew I was targeted. The only reason I was shocked when you stopped from the ball throw was that I thought I lost my chance at keeping my spot. Aizawa could only look in shame as his student explained how he was on to him from the beginning. An awkward silence filled the air mixed with the silent laughter of villains on how heroes were ready to destroy each other. Shigaraki then said, You know something, it's weird you joined the hero side after everything you went through being quirkless. What a waste of potential. Izuku wanted to reply but stopped knowing that arguing with the insane decay user would result in nothing but a strong headache. Discord then said to Shigaraki, You should see the worlds where he's accused of being the UA traitor and how quickly everyone turns on him. This made Izuku's eyes go wide along with All Might with Shigaraki shaking his head. Before any questions can be asked on his last statement, Discord clapped his hands as if nothing happened and said let right, let keep this show moving. The scenes then began to change as Nezu appeared beside Discord. Both of them then lounged on a chair, and shared a toast for Chaos as the rat principal who was now invested in this event said, What a good day for Chaos. Discord replied, You really liked me back when I was a student even made me your personal student, and taught me all your ways for world domination. This made Aizawa cry. Nezu smiled saying, Sounds like something I would do. The screen finally showed a title that made two students blush. Kendo's husband the girl in question stuttered saying, Does that mean that Midoriya and I are married? The chaos user nodded his head, but Kendo then asked, How? We didn't even know each other before you, eh? Surprisingly, Minta answered her, Look even though I'm jealous of that Midoriya for scoring a babe like you, this is another universe, events happen differently. The girl nodded her head. Discord then said, You know through my travels, you were the most girl from 1B in a relationship with another version of myself, this made the orange jet blush, followed by Takut, who smirked, Yui, who kept a calm expression, Ibarra, who hid behind her vines, Riaiko, who had a small blush, Pony, who covered her face, and finally Kanoko who simply huffed being the last. The chaos user then said, Although my personal favorite is Ibarra, the girl now resembled a strawberry with Izuku who was sharing the same predicament. Pony then protested, I thought you said I was your wife in your world. This earned a smirk from Mina, Toru, and Satsuna who decided to grill her later. The chaos being then corrected himself shivering in fear, I mean aside from us. This seemed to calm the horse girl down, but everyone was shocked that he was afraid of her. A single thought echoed throughout everyone's head, I guess I know who wore the pants in their relationship. The scene finally began to change from darkness. Everyone looked around seeing a bridge above a river accompanied by a rainy day. On the bridge, a lonely figure could be seen standing. This made everyone worried as they thought that this person was Izuku ready to end his life. Bakugo was biting his nails off afraid that this version of the nerd actually took his advice. All their assumptions were thrown outside the window when a voice started narrating. Not all men are born equal. That was a life lesson I learned the hard way since I was four. Aizawa blinked a little saying, This doesn't sound like my problem child. The voice sounded familiar, but he couldn't point it out from the rain. It sounded like the students here. Shota then looked at Tetsu and said, Doesn't that sound like? The metal boy silenced him by saying, I don't want to know. Ever since the day that I was diagnosed as quirkless my life became a real living hell the scene was now showing a memory from the person on the bridge. It showed a young girl with orange bright hair sitting on a stool in a doctor's office with her mother squeezing her hand tightly so much so that the girl began to whimper in pain. The girl looked at her mom, who held a smile that behind was the worst scowl in the world. The woman then stood up and began to drag her daughter saying, Let's go, Itsuka. We don't want to bother the good doctor anymore. The little girl then said in a groan, Mommy, you're hurting me and I dropped my Maruko toy. Can I go grab it? The woman looked at the girl with a look that made the little one squirm in fear, be silent, or else. Got it. Little Itsuka could only nod her head not understanding what was going on, or why her mom was angry at her. A huge scream went through the area as everyone screamed, Kendo, you're the one on the bridge. This made the orange head's gut have a bad feeling about what was going to come to that version of herself. The girl rubbed her shoulder saying, it appears so, but that woman doesn't look like my mom. 
so I presume that different world may mean different moms. Discord nodded his head adding, True. For example, in some world Izuku is Shoto's twin brother, so that means Rei is his mom. This made the bicolored boy look happy, while his mother smiled saying, I would like to be the mother of someone as polite as Midoriya, but, yes, he trains them to the bone, but sometimes you pour it on both of them, on one of them, or one of the two save each other, and some you don't do it at all. This made the white-haired woman sigh, but at least she knew that in some worlds, her mental breakdown doesn't happen. Izuku began to wonder if he was going to be quirkless or have a quirk given that case. Some would think that my parents being heroes would prevent them from hating their own daughter, but apparently not. For that, I learned that sometimes those close to you could be your worst enemy. It now showed Itsuka being thrown to the floor by her father yelling at her, You useless brat, you couldn't manifest a quirk. What are the people going to say about us? The daughter of Iron Fist and Plasma Disc is nothing but a quirkless nothing. He finished as he kicked the four-year-old in the head. The girl looked at her mom and whimpered, Mommy. She was caught off by a slap. Shut up. I can't believe that you couldn't even manifest a quirk. Anything would have done it even something as useless as hand enlargement. Why couldn't you be like your other siblings? But I can still be a hero mommy. The girl tried to argue back only to be punched by her father saying, Don't call us that. From now on, it's only sir and ma'am. Got it. Yes, da. I mean sir. The man nodded as he yelled, Go to your room, and don't come out till we call you. And for that day forward began seven years of hell where my family would treat me like an outsider. My own parents kept me out of family events. My own siblings were taught to hate me, and use me as quirk practice. I was barely fed. And I was never allowed outside my room except for school. Kendo looked with a shocked expression at this version of herself, and felt her tears stream down her cheeks as she said to Izuku, Is this how you were treated, Izuku? The boy shook his head saying, No, thankfully my mom wasn't like that. She supported me all the way, and always protected me. Izuku said as he hugged his mother who hugged him back. But he mentally thought as he remembered that different worlds have different events, at least this version of myself that is. Vlad King looked at the screen with disgust, as he said, to think, pro heroes would do this to their own daughter just because she's quirkless. The man then wiped a tear that fell from his eye. A foe smiled as he hoped that this quirkless girl fell into his hand, but for the title, he knows she was saved. He would that my best friends in the world would support me in my time of need, but I was sadly mistaken. The moment I told them I was quirkless, they both turned against me. For that I learned never to trust anyone too quickly. It now showed a scene where Itsuka was with two other girls. One had black hair tied in a ponytail, and the other had wavy green hair. The girls looked at her as she said with tears in her eyes, I'm quirkless, and my parents hate me. She then wiped her tears as she declared loudly, but I'll make them love me again when I become a hero. The two girls looked at each other as if they were having a silent conversation, and Satsuna said, And how are you planning on doing that? You're nothing but a quirkless freak. The orange head seemed betrayed as she said, Set. She right, Kendo. You can't be a hero. Momo said as Itsuka tried to reply saying, But I can try. Satsuna then cut her off saying, But you won't. Do you know why? Because you're a quirkless freak. The two girls then began to circle her saying, Itsuka's a quirkless freak and from that day forward, those two made it their life mission to always make my life as painful as possible. They used to hit me, steal my lunch if I had any, ruin my homework, and turn their quirks on me. Both Momo and Satsuna looked with shocked faces knowing that in this world they were Kendo's bully. Discord then looked at Momo and said, Don't feel too shocked. Some versions of you allow the money to get into your head, but this one is more of a the road to hell is paved with good intentions kind of thing. Satsuna sighed knowing that her being a bully wasn't a common thing. But Momo asked, Why? Well, if you need to know why in some worlds you are a bully. Like I said the money gets into your head, and so does your quirk. For instance, in most worlds where you are a bully, you mostly target one of three, Kendo, yours truly, or Gyro. The Ravenette choked on her own breath knowing that in some worlds, she targets her best friend. But today was something special, and my two best friends did put on quite the performance. It now showed a scene where Kendo was crouched in the corner blood dripping from her head as Satsuna stood in front of her reattaching her head with Momo holding a bloodied metal bat. Satsuna then said, still trying to be a hero little Itsuka. Well here's some advice, go to the nearest river, and drown yourself in it wishing really hard to have a quirk in your next life. The girl said with a laugh only to stop a moment later registering what she said. The two girls in question had their jaws drop, as they watched other versions of themselves beat their friend black and blue till she bled. Satsuna was the one most affected as she heard herself suicide bait her friend. She tried to approach her friend, but the girl flinched and backed away from her for a moment before saying, I'm sorry, Takage, it's just a little bit overwhelming. I mean I just saw myself get beaten half to death, and suicide baited. The girl tried to laugh it off, but everyone could feel how uncomfortable she was. The green-haired girl replied, No, I'm sorry, Kendo. That version of myself just said something so horrible. 
and it's right for you to feel a little bit unnerved after that. The orange-haired girl smiled at her friend as she hugged her, and then looked at Momo who had tears and hugged her too. The scene now returned to the bridge, as Itsuka stood in front of the railings looking into the water below. She then said, Only one step and all my pain will be gone. One of them yelled, No, don't do it. Her friends held her hands and basically smothered her as if she was the one who was about to throw herself off a bridge right now. Discord sweat dropped as he said, You know she can't hear you, right? Monoma then said, How can you be so calm about this? I mean she must have been your friend in your world too. The being replied, When you see different versions of yourself killing themselves, you become quite strong and disinfected against these sort of things. This caused the boy's mouth to be clamped shut knowing that this person must have seen some really disturbing stuff. He then added, Plus, help is on its way. The orange-haired girl was about to jump when a voice called out to her, Hey are you okay? She turned around to dismiss whoever was talking to her. When she turned, she was greeted by a concerned face. The man who greeted her had emerald green eyes and freckles, but the most important thing was she felt a safe aurora emitting from him. Do you need help? The man asked again. She could have just told him that she was fine and to go away. She could have just tricked him and continued with her plan, but she didn't know what drove her to look at him and let herself fall into his embrace as she cried out with tears streaming out, Please, I really need help. And on that day, I've learned that good people haven't died yet and that there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. Everyone breathed a sigh of relief as Yui said, Thank God, Izu came to marry her. This made the orange head yell at her friend and say, Yui, don't say it so causally. It's embarrassing. She then covered herself with her enlarged hands, while Izuku was trying to sink into the ground from the amount of teasing he was receiving from the boys and some glares that he didn't know from where they were coming. Vlad then said, Thank God, nothing bad happened. It really would have been disturbing to see my own student kill herself. A foe, on the other hand, said, It would have been a great opportunity to find a right-hand person from Tamura to help him dominate the country. Such a waste. It was probably the perfect person. All Might then said, Then I would have saved her. The villain smirked as he said, like you saved your master. The hero tried to attack him only for the second user to punt him in the head and say, This is one of the many reasons I refused you, you're too emotional. Three years later it now showed two individuals running inside a lab of sorts. They were on a steel bridge overlooking some tubes that continued some weird deformed humans. All Might then said, Your work, a foe. The man laughed and said, You have to admit that my work is really impressive given the combinations that I make. I mean I do make weak quirks into super effective killing machines. All Might just scoffed. The Waste then said, Did we just have a time skip? And I guess that whatever happening here has a relation with Kendo. The being nodded as he pointed back to the scene. From below, explosions were being heard as a figure was jumping from one side to the other yelling profanities at the two scientists. One of them then yelled to his partner, Run to that door. At the end of the hallway, there's an emergency exit we can use. The other nodded as they reached the end of the hallway. The other scientists tried to open the door but recoiled back from the heat. Then suddenly, the door began to melt as blue hot flames began to emit. The first one then yelled, To the bathroom. There's a vent we can use to escape. Dabai's eyes went wide as he wondered why was attacking a facility of a foe. The two ran to the bathroom, but when they entered the second noticed that there was no vent, and asked, Are you sure there is a vent? The first one then answered him, but he was shocked when he heard a girlish voice. He turned and saw his partner melt before his eyes as a girl with messy blonde hair and cat-like eyes responded, Don't worry, the vent I mentioned depends on how much you cooperate with us. She then brandished a knife to his neck. Suddenly the door of the bathroom was blasted open as two figures walked in. One of them was macabre work of burnt skin, while the other had his face covered. But what stood out was his grenade-like gauntlets and small explosions were emanating from his hands. The scientists asked, What do you want from me? He tried to back away from them. The burnt figure replied, It's not what we want. He pointed to a mirror, it's what he wants. The scientists looked at the mirror only for a man to appear from it, and walked through as he grabbed him, and asked as his other hand hardened, turned into a claw, was covered with green fire, and pointed to his neck, where's all for one is hiding. Screams of pain followed that question. Shigaraki then said, What the fuck? How dare they attack Sensei's facilities? I bet Sensei will destroy them. A foe on the other hand then said, I don't think it's as simple as that young Tamura. I think whoever this person is, he can hold multiple quirks. So that means two things. One he has all for one like me, or he has a very strong copying quirk. And if he has one like that this means he must be stockpiling quirks like me. And given the explosions from the figure beside Dabai, I'd take a safe bet that this is young Bakugo, and the other figure is young Midoriya. And I will take a safe bet that I'm his father in this world, given that he can handle multiple quirks. Shigaraki seemed shocked by the explanation. While All Might scoffed that someone as nice as Midoriya will come from that monster, he looked at Discord who had a very casual look in his eyes making him dread everything. 
It now showed a scene inside a house. It showed a bedroom where someone was sleeping. But then he was woken up by another saying, Wake up Suka, it's time for school. The girl in question whined saying, No, I want more cuddles. School can wait a little bit. The figure replied saying, No, it's time for school. Come on get up. I also need to take our angel to her school. Before returning home to sleep from my night shift, the girl burst from under the covers hugging the person. The person had emerald green eyes and freckles on his face. To Itsuka, he was her lovely husband, the man who saved her from her dark world, and brought her to a place where she felt safe and cared for. He was Izuku Midori. She then tackled him in a hug saying, Cuddles the girl in question began to steam as she looked at the green-haired boy who have already passed out at this point. And had Yuraka and Tsuyu try to wake him up, she really wished she can pass out too. She was so embarrassed, but at the same time, she felt happy since that version of herself found happiness. Aren't they too young to be married though? She wondered. Takage walked up to her with Mina saying, Well, well, look at that kendo, who knew that you were a cuddle-type kind of person. And what do you know you have a daughter with Greenie in that world the girl shook her head as she said, I'm not. I mean I am. I mean. Discord then neck chopped Takage who pouted and said, leave her be, more embarrassing moments will come going on forward and you'll be among them. The green-haired girl then stopped as she continued to watch making a vow to tease the hell out of Izuku when a world where she's a couple with him appeared. Izuku said, all right five more minutes, but you have to get up. He said as he kissed her forehead and then added, by the way, we're going to the Bakugo's house today for dinner. The girl smiled because she was going to see her brother figure, Katsuki. From the outside, he may appear to everyone as a jerk, but he's really one of the most caring people she ever met albeit in his own rude way. Bakugo stared in shock. There's a world where a quirkless person sees him as a brother figure. It just made him feel weird given all the abuse he put his friend through. Itsuka then asked, Can I ask two questions? First, how are we married and we're that young? And second why is Bakugo nice? And we all know that he's a piece of trash. This caused the explosion user to get angered saying, Do you want to die carrot head? He was ignored. Discord answered her. Well for one, in that world quirkless people are legally adults by the age of 11 so both you and Izuku are adults so you can be married. But Izuku's case is complicated a little bit. As for Bakugo, he has his own reasons. And why are quirkless people adults in that world? Is it to give them special rights given that they're really disenfranchised? Achako asked. Discord gave her a blank stare as he said. No, it's to give their parents a reason to kick them out without legal repercussion. The girl quickly deflated knowing how quirkless people had it rough. The door was flung open as a figure quickly barreled itself into both Itsuka and Izuku. Only for Izuku to say, How are you, angel? The figure was then revealed to be a little girl with curly green hair and emerald eyes. But when Izuku rubbed her head a little white horn appeared. The girl answered, I'm really good, daddy. She then looked at her Itsuka and said, And mom, you should really get ready for school today. Itsuka popped out of the hug with a small pout as she said, No fairy, both of you and your father teaming up against me. I want to revote. She then hugged both of them, before sighing and saying, I'm ready. Back with the audience, Iri innocently looked at both Kendo and Izuku, and asked them, does that mean you're both my new mommy and daddy? The two teens fidgeted as they tried to weasel their way from answering that question. One wrong move and it could make the girl extremely depressed. Finally, Kendo gave in saying, yes sweetie, that makes us your mommy and daddy. The little girl then grabbed both their hands, and smiled saying, can you two hug each other like those two? Both teens blushed, but they powered through not wanting to make Iri feel sad. Izuku discreetly shot Aizawa a dirty look, who only gave him a shit-eating grin that meant he enjoyed his misery. Iri then hugged them both saying, I really love mommy and daddy. This made both Izuku's and Kendo's hearts melt. At the same time, they couldn't help but feel a combination of deadly glares feel on their backs as if they were prey, and a predator was waiting for them. Izuku sighed as he slammed the door shut after All Might left his house. It's like one for all has something against me. Why does my wife have to hold this cursed quirk? And to top it off, she has to face my villainous father of all people. Today was great, at least as great as it can get in Izuku's mind. Yesterday, he gained a new quirk from the scientist he beat the shit out of. It was some kind of eye laser quirk. Pity that he chose to work for my dad. A disembodied voice echoed out saying, Izuku Midoriya, real name unknown. His quirk is permanent copy which allows him to copy any quirk factor regardless of the type. Mutations are his less favorite, but he has a huge arsenal of them including the quirk of the number 2 hero Hawks. Izuku Midoriya was a lot of things, a loving father, a good husband, an awesome bartender, and lots more. But the thing he hated about himself was that he was a lair. He hated that he had to lie to Itsuka about his real identity, who he was, and that he had a quirk. He hated that he had to lie about where most of their money came from to her. 
He hated that he couldn't just tell her the truth, but he just wanted to keep her safe from his dad's clutches. The man had a serious liking to destroy the lives of anyone affiliated with an OFA user, but now she was in the crossfire, and he wasn't about to lay get caught in it. He was thrusted out of his thoughts when Itsuka said, I can't believe it, Izu. All Might wants to train me, and wants me to have his quirk. Isn't that awesome? A boy using a quirk he copied from on the street that allows him to smile no matter what said, Yeah, that's really great. And I can't wait for you to prove all those doubters wrong my suka. The girl blushed as she covered her face, and said, Alright, I'm off to the dojo. The teacher wants to teach me a new technique before I go to the entrance exam. The boy flashed her a smile and waited till she left the house. He then took out a weird-looking phone and called it saying, Guys, code, transfer has occurred. I repeat code, transfer has occurred. We need to double our efforts to find him. A foe was laughing so much that he almost had a vain pop. The man was half to double over and roll on the ground as he said, That's really hilarious. My son shares our hate for one for all, though it's because of the curse that accompanied represented by me. Nana could only look at that Izuku, and sigh understanding what he was feeling at the moment. Hawks said, How the heck was he able to grab my quirk? A smack from Endeavor to his head caused him to turn to the flame hero as he said, What the heck man why did you smack my head like that? The flame hero then said, I smacked you because of all of that handshaking you do all the time. I'm sure he pretended to fan to gain your quirk. Be careful, we don't need someone like that in our world doing that to you. The winged hero looked down at the ground as he thought about what the flame hero said, and nodded. A foe then said, It must be amazing for my son to copy one for all, or at least its components, and do the thing I failed to do. This causes Yoichi to say, What are you going about brother? He can't copy one for all. The man nodded his head, but retorted, read the description of his quirk better. It says that copies the quirk factor, not the quirk itself, and yours is made of two, so he was able to copy your transference quirk and the one I gave you. Now that I think about it that version of young Midoriya has a non-lethal all for one. This caused the other users of one for all to be shocked since the quirk stockpiled their quirks too which means he also got their quirks. Izuku walked out of the bar that worked in, as he entered an alleyway. Suddenly all of his clothes began to shift and mutate, till finally, he was wearing a black jumpsuit with dark gloves. On the glove's fingers, there were portal openings for the fingers. The rest of the suit was rather simple. He continued to walk from one place to another till he finally reached his target which was an old rundown building. He kicked the door, as it opened revealing his right-hand man Dynamite, or he knew him as his childhood friend Katsuki Bakugo. Even though they had a rough patch once Izuku's quirk came in, they made it through it. They both had the same goal sending a foe six feet under. Shigaraki scoffed as he said, good luck with brats. I bet Sensei will blow that version of Bakugo and Midori away even with all of the latter's quirks. Kirishima had to restrain Katsuki from attacking the man. He looked inside the room to see both their allies Dabai and Himiko waiting for him. Dabai, when he first met him, was hell-bent on killing his younger brother Shoto Todoroki as a way to get vengeance against his father. But Izuku through hard work managed to convince him to directly attack his dad by revealing the man who he really is. Who knew the number two was such an ass? Himiko was a complicated case. She was a wronged spirit that both boys managed to save before she turned to the wrong side. It was one of Izuku's day patrols when he saw her. She was about to attack her classmate, but jumped down scaring the boy and took her away. The girl begged him not to hurt her and told him her story. The boy felt sympathetic for her knowing how it feels to have a shitty parent, so he and Katsuki helped her through their contacts in their underworld or mainly Izuku's contacts given that at the time Katsuki haven't started his vigilante career. All the Todorokis looked at Dabai who sighed and said, Yeah, I'm Taoya. He looked at the screen to see a vigilante version of himself. It's nice to see a version of myself where I live my dreams, and didn't become a walking representation of pure hatred. Himeko could only look with tears in her eyes to see a world where she wasn't forced to be a villain to live. Well guys, All Might finally decided to pass his quirk. They all looked at him as Dabai asked, Did you manage to get what you want from him? The boy nodded. Dabai noticed the annoyed look his face had, and said, What happened? In their little vigilante group, he was the big brother that kept everything in check. Izuku sighed. All Might chose, from the millions of people, in Japan my wife to be his successor. He threw a dirty look at Katsuki who looked away and shouted, I didn't see the slime villain? Okay. Do you think that a bug like that would've got me? Himiko said, Come guys, don't fight. We have to find a way to prevent it, or at least change All Might's mind. It was then that Izuku lifted his arm saying, No, I just can't do to her. This is her opportunity, not mine. I can't just come onto her and tell her that she can't have the quirk. Dabai crossed his arms saying, What do we do now? Your dear old dad will find out about the quirk transference and come knocking on your front door sooner or later. The boy slumped against the wall thinking about the different forms of torture he wants to put All Might through for his worthless stunt. He rubbed his forehead as he said, Things got complicated a lot. 
but for now we need to start plan nighttime. All Might shivered as saw a different version of his successor planning to hurt him, asking, why does that young Midoriya hate me so much? Aizawa replied, I can understand why. He rather hates you for your move giving his wife your quirk that comes with its own arch nemesis, who by the way is his father, as a bonus feature. Honestly, I was shocked how kept a calm face when you walked into his house telling him about the quirk he hated so much and didn't try to kick you, I know I would, anyone would. I think he wanted this version of Kendo to become a quirkless hero, so she could a symbol of hope. Izuku wondered out loud from his embrace with Kendo and Iri, I wonder what that nighttime operation is. Discord then said, alright, that's enough for now. Let's see your opinions on what you saw. The third universe Discord looked at everyone waiting for them to give their opinions on the world that they just witnessed. Surprisingly, AFO spoke first. I admit the concept of this universe is quite alluring. The son rebelled against his father and tried to defeat him only for one of his loved ones to carry out that mission without knowing it. It reminds me of a manga story that I once read. This caused Yoichi to groan in annoyance. The man chuckled as he said, Is there a problem, brother? The younger Shigaraki just said, I should have never introduced you to the Demon King manga. If I knew that you're going to try to become Demon King Overlord, I would have introduced you to Love Nobles. This made the users of Ofa quirk an eyebrow as the third user said, Yoichi, what are you saying? Cause what I heard means that FO came to be because he read a manga. The first user sadly nodded his head as the other users just facepalmed knowing that their nemesis probably defeated them using manga tropes. Kendo could only chuckle knowing that the monster Izuku would face one day is only strong due to manga tropes. She looked to her side where she was still hugging the green-haired boy, with Iri between them, who was giving her an unimpressed look. Well, I find it educational. I mean it opened my eyes to how the world is truly unfair, and made me strive to become even a better hero. And all might. She looked at the blonde hero. It would be an honor to be your successor. She finished as the blonde hero smiled. Discord then said, Mini-me. What do you think? Izuku replied, It's kinda cool. I mean the ability to copy quirks. I can imagine a super move using Hawks and Ryuku's quirks with a fire, something like Rin's quirk, and a porcupine quirk, and some steel nails. The boy continued to carry on till he flicked him on the nose saying, Daddy, you're muttering. The boy chuckled as he looked at her, and smiled. He looked behind him as he felt some glares aimed at him. He saw Monoma and Tetsu Tetsu with visible ticks on their foreheads and began to sweat bullets. Kendo looked behind her as well, and she saw Yuraka and the rest of the Wana girls glaring at her angrily. She simply blew a raspberry at them and mouthed, I got him first. Deal with it. Unknown to the green-haired boy, the entire population of girls in the first year has a crush on him with each girl trying to get him to notice her affection, but nothing seems to work given that the boy seems oblivious. Discord could only look and snicker at Izuku's situation as he saw the teachers putting a bet on who will end with Izuku after this. He then sweat dropped as he said, Did they forget that they will forget everything once I send them back? He then shrugged as he went to them. I say that he will have a harem of 1A, 1B, and Meh. The teachers nodded as All Might chose Achako, Midnight chose Momo, Vlad King chose Itsuka, Power Loader chose Mei given that he was the only person the girl talked about, Ectoplasm chose Tsuyu, Hound Dog chose Ibarra, Mike chose Kayoka, Nezu chose Same as Discord, Lunch Rush chose Mina, Cementos chose Satsuna due to his belief that opposites attract, Snipe chose surprisingly Yui saying that the boy seems to understand her without her talking when he once saw them studying together in the library, Eraser chose Toru saying that Izuku is the only who seems to understand her, 13 chose the same as All Might, and Recovery Girl after sighing for the hundred time chose Kanoko shocking everyone. Discord shook his head as he added, All right, we had a small break. Everyone talked and had a break, but before we continue, he snapped his fingers restoring AFO's face as the man cheered for being able to breathe. Does anyone still have anything to say? Katsuki replied, Yeah, if Deku and I aren't there in the USJ, who saves the extras? And also who saved Roundface if Deku doesn't go to UA? The second question caused the girl's eyes to widen, but Discord said, Regarding the first question, you both came to their rescue because yourself from that world managed to gain information about the attack. But Izuku being reckless was waiting for them at the USJ, and you had to make up an excuse with your mother, so you can go and help him. This caused Katsuki to look at Izuku who chuckled awkwardly now out of the hug, but he was still leaning against Kendo who was playing with his hair. And for the first question, Kendo saved her although a little bit more wisely. Though in Izuku's defense, she did get Ofa three months after meeting All Might, given that after she met Izuku, she started to train to be a hero. He stopped for a little before adding, she still broke her arm though to destroy the Zero Pointer. Any other questions? Discord asked only for Todoroki to say, what happens after that? Or can you tell us some important details? Discord nods as he says, well, Kendo trains for OFA, she receives it, she breaks her arm. 
All Might gets a huge lecture from Izuku, she gets into UA, and stuff happens. I don't want to tell anymore because it will take the fun out of it further down the line. Shoto only nodded to that. A lot more questions came out, but most of them weren't worthwhile. So he said, alright next world coming right up. The worlds began to flicker as it finally rested on one. Teacher Izuku this made a racer head lift an eyebrow imagining two All Might's teaching at UA. So he had to ask, is this a world where he was born earlier? Discord shook his head causing the man to wonder how he became a teacher if he wasn't born earlier. But he knew he will understand soon, so he didn't push it any further. The scene shifted to inside Nezu's office where a smiling Nezu was seen along with a small man wearing a yellow suit with a baffled-looking Izuku and All Might. I'm sorry Principal Nezu, but I don't think I heard you right, Izuku said as he looked at a gaping All Might who was shocked as much as he was. When he was called to meet Nezu in his acceptance letter, he didn't expect the rat god to say, congrats on becoming our newest teacher in addition to All Might. Both he and the hero looked at each other still not believing it. Aizawa looked at the screen with shock, as he copied the reaction of All Might and Izuku of that world. Nezu could only laugh maniacally as he said, Oh, Discord, I see why I made you my student in that world. You truly are a master of chaos. I'm honored that I was able to be a teacher to you. Aizawa asked, How in the hell did that happen? Problem child wasn't able to control his power, so how will he be able to teach a class? Discord bit his lip as he said, Well, it's going to be explained right now, but I'll let you know that it's technically your fault since you put Izuku's name on the paper form for you and yours on the student form before stamping them and sending them to Nezu whose hands were tied and couldn't anything anymore at that point since it was finalized. Aizawa could only slap his forehead for what that version of himself did and asked, Please, was he? Discord cut him off, yes, he was. Kirishima figured his unbreakable mode before the sports festival. Aizawa sighed in relief. Nezu added, I know that this might seem a little bit unnerving given that you have no control over your quirk, and you aren't a hero. The boy only nodded. So Nezu carried on, I really want to change what happened, but my hands are tied given that the rules state that the homeroom teacher can't be changed under any circumstances after what the previous principal did. Izuku nodded his head remembering reading about the incident once. Izuku shook his head saying, H how will I be be able t to t teach a C class if I am not a H hero? Nezu nodded understanding saying, A warranted worry, but no problem, I already have a plan for everything. First, the man over there is Gran Torino, All Might's old homeroom teacher. Izuku looked at him as Torino cracked his knuckles and smiled menacingly. He will train for the next two months to master Ofa with other teachers training you in other things such as combat and rescue tactics till the end of the second month where you'll be applying to obtain your provisional hero licensing exam. Izuku's jaw dropped as Nezu added, and technically, you'll finish your first year here. As for your cover story, you'll be introduced as All Might's protege, who he was training in secret to take his place once he retires to the Hero Commission, so they will agree. All in all, by the end of the year, you'll be the youngest hero in the world. Izuku blinked saying, so, I'll have an entire year compressed into two months, another into three months, and a third into three months. Nezu smiled as he said, true, I'm happy you understood the situation quickly. You were surprisingly more accepting than the teacher who was supposed to teach you, and now is your student. Izuku massaged his forehead as he looked at All Might who looked flabbergasted. Okay, I accept not that I can't, but I have one request. Nezu was now cackling madly as he said, Truly magnificent. I wonder who young Izuku will act like a teacher. I bet that the me of that world could have easily reversed that decision, but he only didn't because he wanted to mess with Shouta. The racer had nodded knowing that was something up the rat's alley. On the student's side, Achako said, Deku is our teacher. Wow, that must have been awesome. I mean imagine all the things he has for us in his notebook. And if he was given our quirks before he met us that means he was able to analyze us more. Todoroki added, I admit it is truly intriguing how is he able to teach us given how he was at the beginning of the year. He remembered how his best friend used to shiver at the slightest sound. Momo giggled as she said with a blush, I believe that Izuku has great teaching capability." And I'm sure the other teachers gave him some tips, but I only want to see Aizawa sensei's reaction to the first day. The other students nodded their heads as they imagined how pissed their teacher will be regarding this, given how he acted toward Izuku at the first of the year. It was now on the training field as students from both classes were waiting. Kendo sighed as she said, where is Vlad sensei? He told us to come here with our sister class to perform the assessment test together, but he's nowhere to be found. Momo replied, truly, it's frustrating. The boy who met us in the class told us that our homeroom teacher will meet us here, but he's a no-show. She looked at Achako who seemed a little bit dejected given that the boy was the one who saved her, but he was forced to drop out cause his mother couldn't pay the school fee. Dear Araka, I know that you're sad, but how about I lend him a hand? I'll see if I'm able to put him in general studies, and then maybe he'll be able to advance to the hero course through the sports festival. The gravity smiled at that. 
On the other side, Bakugo was worried. He knew that Izuku's mom was working day in and day out, but this was troubling that his mom wasn't producing enough money to put him in school. Kamakiri of Class 1B looked at his sister class and saw someone that quipped his interest. He was an older man who had shaggy-looking hair with a tired look on his face so he asked, Aren't you a little old to be here? Kamakiri blushed in embarrassment, as the others laughed at him and his question. Do I look like I want to be here? Aizawa said in annoyance. He hated the idea of allowing the glass cannon to run a class, but it was his fault in the first place so he couldn't argue much, and by the look of it the problem child wasn't even taking his job seriously. Honestly what was Nezu thinking allowing? His thoughts were cut off as he felt something punch him in the back slamming him to the ground and knocking the wind out of him. The jaws of the Hero Corps students, specifically 1A, dropped as they watched the scene unfold. Kaminari asked in shock, Did Midoriya manage to get the drop on Aizawa Sensei of that world? Minda then looked at him, I think so, but that's impossible. How was he able to do that? Mina added, What truly shocking is how they didn't notice him sitting in a small tree behind them all the time. Everyone turned to her as she was known as a person who had zero awareness of her surroundings. Aizawa himself was going through many emotions. First was anger for that version of himself letting his guard down. Second, pride for his problem child managing to get the drop on him. And lastly, happiness that the problem child managed to find a way to make the first day more interesting. Back Hugo looked and he was about to yell when something kicked him in the face sending him to the ground with a thud only to be followed by Todoroki a couple of seconds later. Two minutes later, the entirety of the hero course was on the ground groaning in pain as their mystery attacker stopped as he said, I kinda expected better, but I'll give you a break given that you're on the first day. He looked at Eraser saying, but that doesn't excuse someone who is a pro not to notice my attack, or notice that I was hiding in a tree all this time. The students all stood up as Ida asked, who are you, and why did you attack us? The attacker was wearing a green suit with white gloves, and some braces for his legs and hands with a bunny hood and a breathing apparatus. The attacker tilted his head as he said, I thought you'd recognize me by now, but no matter. I'm your homeroom teacher, and I was testing your awareness of your surroundings, and you all failed horribly. It abound saying, I see, please forgive. It was then that Mina yelled, Oh my god, I know you. You're All Might's protege. He then removed his hood saying, Good, for now on, I'll be the homeroom teacher of Class 1A. He said as Vlad King came up next to him, and said, And today, you truly set the bar lower than expected, but like he said we'll let it slide given that it's your first day. Achako yelled, you're the falling boy. She pouted at him saying, and you made me worried that you weren't in the hero course, but you're our homeroom teacher. Why didn't you say so? My bad. But I wanted to give a false sense of security. Who would expect the innocent looking boy to be planning your beat down? Izuku said as everyone nodded their heads, even Eraser Head who pride was hurt. But one reaction stood out as Bakugo yelled out in anger saying, Deku you bastard, you had a quirk and never told me. You've been looking down on me. He began to run toward him. All the students looked at Izuku who seemed that he wanted to melt into the ground as Iri asked, Daddy, why did you hurt mommy? The boy began to fumble as Kendo answered her by saying, We were only training sweetie. He didn't mean to hurt me. The girl satisfied nodded her head. Aizawa looked at his student giving him a thumbs up as he said, Good idea, Midoriya. Toru added, But that was really painful. She noticed Aizawa's unimpressed look, but she quickly added, I wonder what he also has planned, and what he's planning to do with Bakugo attacking him. Suyu patted her on the back again saying, Nice save for the second time. Might wanna stop while you're at it. Bakugo wasn't able to make it far as he was knocked out by neck chop and was thrown to a racer. Izuku said, From now on, you'll all refer to me by Midoriya Sensei. And like Ashido said I'm All Might's personal protege better known as Jade Phoenix. Bakugo jumped saying, Like shit Deku, it's bad enough you managed to pass, now you're my teacher. I won't accept a fucker. He was silenced when Izuku said, Then leave. What the fuck did you say? Bakugo replied, You heard me. I have the power to expel students I don't want. And there are a couple of students who have wonderful quirks in the general studies area that want to be in the hero course. Bakugo's entire body froze as he felt his soul leave his body because at that moment he knew that Deku was fucking serious. Look Bakugo, I know that you don't like me and I don't like you, but as of right now your fate is in my hands so do your best to behave. The blonde growled at the statement but nodded his head nonetheless. Everyone then felt afraid, but only one girl was not convinced. The students looked in shock as they saw Izuku practically blackmail Bakugo into submission as the blonde merely growled like his counterpart. AFO said, well, that's the sign of a good teacher. Why are you so shocked that he did that? He was only keeping the boy in line. Yoichi bit his lip as he said, you're right, brother. I hate it when you're right, but you are. I also don't get why everyone is shocked that he blackmailed him. Izuku looked around noticing Momo's skeptical look. He wondered if he should burst her bubble and tell her that he can expel them at a hat's drop, but chose not to because she already seemed down from the previous beatdown. 
He looked at his class, but one of the 1B students then said, You know it's not fair that one of students literally get All Might's protege as a homeroom teacher, no offense Vlad Sensei. He was a blonde with a smug-looking face. Izuku sighed as he already expected this, but said, This is not important. Now, let's move on to the good stuff. Now, you'll have an assessment test first with your quirks and second without them. Vlad carried on. Each of you will do eight tests twice. Some of you might think of it as a waste of time. But we want to check your physical state given that there are some situations where your quirks will cause more damage than good. Now, any questions? Momo raised her hand. Sensei, I know that it's not my place to ask, but what did Bakugo mean when he said that you were hiding your quirk? This caused Izuku to sigh knowing that this question was going to be asked. Well, if you need to know, my quirk only came in two months ago. All Might has been training me for the past year when he met me and took me in. Now, I would like to keep the condition of that meeting to myself. All Might wanted me to study under him or someone from the top 10, however, something came up and I ended here. He threw a glare toward Aizawa who scoffed. Wow, Midoriya seems to be angry at Aizawa-sensei. Siro said as Sato added, I know I would. Man, just imagine it. Three years compressed into one year. He might go crazy. Aizawa sighed as he said, I can't really blame him. I mean he's a teenager who's now supposed to play teacher and guide an entire class full of students. I only hope that Vlad gives him a hand navigating this thing. The blood hero nodded saying, I hope that too. Though I must give him credit though, he seems to be doing wonderful till now. Eraserhead gave him a blank look as he added, I bet once the class is over, he'll fall over in the teacher's lounge. The blood hero hummed agreeing with him while Izuku seemed offended at the notion, but couldn't help agreeing with him. Bakugo yelled, Bullshit, quirks manifest when you're four, six at most. You're. He was cut off by Kendo from class 1B as she said, Well, that's not exactly right. There is a record for the oldest late bloomer was 35, so having a quirk appear at 15 is rare, but possible. This made Bakugo's head spin as he couldn't accept that his target had a quirk of his own. Kirishima then yelled, That's so manly. We have a prodigy teaching us, and he's also All Might's successor. That's so cool. Izuku's sweat dropped as he had one thought. If they only knew Ida added, I see, then the reason you went to the entrance test was to scout us, students, to see which one of us was taking the test seriously, and who has heroic qualities. He clenched his fist as he said, I can't believe that I embarrassed myself in front of All Might's successor, and chastised him. Momo nodded her head as she added, I also believe they put him in the test if a robot malfunctioned. These things could happen. But if they had a hero or at least a hero in training among the contestants, the safety of the test will be wonderful. Her eyes sparkled as she said, I can't wait to see what wisdom you have to give us. Similar sounds of happiness were being emitted. But Izuku just sighed as he said, All right, you're happy that I'll be your teacher, but daytime is being wasted. He looked at Bakugo who was still shocked and said, Come here and stand in the circle. I want to throw the ball with your quirk the hardest you can. Bakugo smiled as he took the ball and walked to the circle, don't hold back. The boy heard Izuku telling him. He grinned evilly as he threw the ball with a huge explosion. Izuku's phone was now connected to the ball as it timed with Izuku humming in approval. He then said, try it without your quirk now. The boy obliged albeit less happy. The device timed once again. He held Bakugo's scores being 810 and 80 saying, these are good scores Bakugo. The boy puffed his chest in pride. Everyone hummed in approval seeing Izuku acting as a teacher. Some laughed at their counterpart's reaction to Izuku while Bakugo seemed happy with his scores in that world. Nezu hummed, I gotta give him credit. He's taking his role better than I expected. I have a feeling that he had some sessions with me to help him get in the role. Discord nodded saying, True, you spend with him two months when he wasn't training, teaching him how to be a teacher. You also helped him with his lessons. However, he had a different idea for the lessons for the first years. Aizawa hummed saying, What did he plan? He was really intrigued to see what Izuku planned. Discord answered him. Izuku made the first year a huge joint training exercise because he didn't want the supposed rivalry between the two classes to go with them when they graduated. It took a lot of effort, but he managed to convince Vlad after he mentioned a certain incident that happened with two of UAS Grotto. Eight's a year before. Vlad asked, what happened? He had a bad feeling about this incident. Asia, two students, one from 1A and one from 1B had their rivalry spark in the middle of a rescue mission which caused their deaths and 20 civilians. Both teachers paled as they made notes to tone their rivalry. Meanwhile, Kendo gave Monoma a look that said see what happens when you allow rivalry to cut your judgment. The boy only chuckled. The two classes began to cheer as Mina said, we can use our quirks. That's really awesome, Siro added, this is going to be seriously fun. This sentiment was something that everyone agreed on except when Eraserhead said, fun. This is no place for fun here. You're here to become heroes if you can't take it seriously. He was cut off by Izuku saying, enough out of you. They're eager to learn and push themselves forward. This kind of spirit is what we need to be exported to the world. Add to that, they're in a safe environment where they can learn. 
Aizawa glared at him saying, You're not taking this seriously. This world isn't all sunshine and rainbows. You may be able to tank a hard hit, but they can't. Izuku replied, And you do. If I remember you don't have to worry about punching someone so hard. He blows. And if I may remind you, you ruin people's life at the drop of a hat by randomly expelling students who don't meet your standards whatever they are like last year expelling an entire class. What kind of irresponsible teacher expels an entire class and to add to that gave them a black mark ruining their lives forever? Aizawa scoffed. They had no potential. I didn't ruin their. Mawata Fiwa, Izuku said, quirk cloud. It gives the ability to summon clouds right on them and make them rain, snow, throw lighting, and many more. Aizawa looked at him intrigued. I found her with All Might trying to steal a store because her parents kicked her out the day you expelled her. She tried to apply for a job, but no one wanted an expelled student same thing with high schools. Currently, she lives with me and my mom while she doing a villain rehabilitation program. He gave Eraser an unimpressed look. You talk about ruining lives, but you do it so much it's actually funny that you lecturing about it. Izuku shook his head saying, you're the worst excuse of a teacher I've ever seen, so eager to traumatize your own students in the name of strengthening them. I'm pretty sure that they'll see that in the internships. And since you're so high and mighty, here's a test. In those eight tests you have to do something to impress me, or you're expelled on the spot. Aizawa was shocked. He knew he was a hero, but he couldn't help but feel afraid. He then remembered what the other kids said about the boy, and began to wonder if his whole entrance exam was a test, and if this whole switch up wasn't an accident but something to test if he was still worthy of being a teacher, all right now that's over let's continue the test, Izuku said as he looked at the silent students. Aizawa was shocked at what happened, his student looked the same. The man began to wonder if this is what Izuku really thinks about him. It was easily established that his student had no trust in him at the beginning of the year, but now seeing this began to let him wonder how his student really feels about him. The students were shocked at how Izuku managed to put a racer head in place, as Kaminari and Minta began bowing to him as they said, We are at your service, my lord. The boy chuckled with Iri at their antics. He then said, Come on guys, you know what that version of myself is saying isn't true. The two nodded their heads while the other members of Wana only bit their lips. On the teacher's side, Vlad commented, I have to admit this went horribly wrong quickly, but somehow he managed to tame Aizawa. The others nodded their heads, as Vlad added, I'm only grateful that Aizawa reinstates them in our world. All Might nodded as he said, but I'm happy that this Izuku didn't cave in. Ectoplasm then said, I wonder what he will do about Todoroki given that the boy will hold back. After that small altercation, the rest of the tests went smoothly with Eraser giving it his all as he watched the green-haired boy observe him like a hawk watching its prey. The nighttime hero knew that the kid was signaling him out. He knew that he will expel him no matter what he does. And why shouldn't he? He was a pro, there was no reason for him to stay. It would be illogical for him to stay in the hero course, and it seems that his homeroom teacher feels the same way. And done Izuku timed the last of the students finishing the endurance test which was Momoye Irazu. He and Vlad have co-piloted the tests with each watching their own students do their best. Alright, you all did your best, and I'm very proud of you whether be it from 1 or 1B. I hope that we'll continue to work with each other. Now, here is the ranking for both classes. It then showed a screen with both classes ranked as Vlad said, don't take this like it is your value. All of you are strong and capable. Those who are on the top don't slack off, and those who are on the bottom will work from there to bring you up. The top student in Wana was Momo, while Itsuka was the first in 1B. However in class 1 Ashoto Todoroki was the last student in class, and even Eraserhead was shocked. Todoroki eyed the scene as he said, well, he did say that he wanted us to go all out. I kinda saw that one coming. Shoji then said, you're not bothered that he basically failed you. The boy shrugged saying, if Aizawa-sensei wasn't so focused on Midoriya at the first of the year, he would have done the same. The teacher felt even worse now. He did notice Todoroki holding back, but he was so focused on Izuku that he didn't actually address the problem at the time. The boy looked shocked as he asked, Why am I last? I gave it my all. Izuku looked at him as he said, I think I specifically told everyone to don't hold back, yet you did the exact opposite. Your information says that your quirk is half cold half hot. Yet you only used your ice in this test, so you didn't go all out and you held back, which meant you failed the first objective meaning you failed all the exams. Shocked gasps echoed as Momo said, Sensei, aren't you being a little harsh? Izuku looked at her. If I allowed him to continue like this, then one day he'll go out there and die because he didn't use half of his quirk. He looked at Todoroki as he asked, So, is there a reason you didn't use half of your quirk? Todoroki replied, I don't need it. I swore I would become a hero using my mom's quirk, and I don't need his quirk to do it. Both Izuku and Vlad looked at him not understanding what he was going at. So Izuku said, But you can't become a hero half-assing it. People's lives are on the line. What if a day came, and you couldn't use your ice to save them? What if you came against a villain who has a quirk that's able to counter your quirk? 
Todoroki replied quickly. That won't happen. If I ever came against a villain like that, I'll bury him in ice till he gives up. Are you willing to tell me why then? Or go to Hound Dog to talk with him about this? No Todoroki replied calmly which he noticed didn't sit well with Izuku. Izuku shook his head as he said, I'm sorry, Todoroki, but that can't do. From now on, you consider your seat in the hero course frozen. You'll be moved to the general study course, and you have till the sports festival to prove to me that you deserve this seat, or else you'll be expelled. Everyone was shocked that Izuku just threatened Shoto with expulsion. Shoto himself didn't seem phased too much because he knew that Izuku will find a way to make him use his quirk before the sports festival. He was mildly shocked that this Izuku managed to make him tell the reason why he didn't use his quirk or at least a part of it, but it's a start. Achako looked at Izuku and said, isn't that a little bit unfair, Deku? She was shocked when he shook his head. Not at all, I mean it's what Aizawa sensei said the world isn't fair. That version of me did the best it can. And the only reason I was able to help Todoroki is that he told me his reason, unlike that version. Aizawa replied, he's right. His assessment was spot on. And objectively speaking, he did tell everyone to go all out. And Todoroki failed to meet the objective, so he failed automatically on all the tests since he didn't meet the objective. The other teachers nodded as they gave ectoplasm money. Todoroki was shocked that he was now threatened with expulsion, so he yelled, What makes you think you can do this? Do you think since you're All Might's protege, you can do whatever you want? The students were shocked that Todoroki just shouted at him, but Izuku wasn't phased. He calmly replied, You're not the only one here on the chopping block. He looked at Minta as he said, Minta, you did as I told you and went all out. The boy breathed a sigh of relief, but I was told of your less than favorable actions toward the girls, and I saw everything during the assessment test. If you harass any girl be it from 1 or 1B, I will expel on the spot. He then looked at Todoroki and said, But since you're so sure that your ice is all you need, let's have a duel. If you win, I'll admit that you can be a hero with only half a quirk, if you don't a general studies it is. The boy looked at him and nodded. Everyone was shocked that Todoroki accepted while the boy himself looked with a worried look knowing how painful this will be for him. Man, how do you think we'll win? Siro asked Takoyami who replied, In the greater scheme of things, I think Midoriya. It makes sense since this version has more control. Todoroki looked at the challenge in front of him and internally smiled. If he managed to beat All Might's protege, he'd finally prove to that bastard that he doesn't need his fire. The boy began by making the largest iceberg he can, burying Izuku in it. He looked at his handy work as he felt frostbite was forming, but it was worth it. He looked at everyone's scared faces except 1B's homeroom teacher whose fingers were making a countdown. As the last finger went down, Shoto heard a huge shattering sound followed by something that wrapped around him. And the last thing he felt was something colliding with his face knocking him out. Izuku stood over him as he retracted Black Whip saying, That wasn't too hard, now was it? Everyone was shocked that all it took was one punch to take out Todoroki he looked then at both Momo and Toru who began to sweat afraid of doing something wrong. But he said, Yeyorazu and Hagakir, I took a look at your hero costumes and I disapproved of them. I want to both go to the support lab this after the class is finished so we can make a DNA suit for both of you. But sadly that means that you'll be forced to use your PE clothes for your first heroics class. Do you have any problems? Both girls shook their heads as Izuku finally landed on Aizawa. Aizawa, given that you're a pro, you're expelled. But don't worry Nezu still wants you around, so students meet your new quirkless combat instructor. This made Aizawa grin evilly unnerving the students. Izuku then addressed both classes. Look, I may have looked with Todoroki right now like some tyrant, but I have all of your best interests at heart. Here, you are all going to give it your all or fail so you can learn from your mistakes because in the field there are no riddles. A hero needs to be ready to do anything to protect people's lives and has to throw out any personal issues he has outside the window. For that here at you. A. You'll be all trained till you reach your limit and after that, you'll still be training. But don't panic we'll be there to carry you to safety, so that's why I want you all to go plus ultra. And someone please help Todoroki to the infirmary. Finally, Vlad said, now that this is over, all of you go to your classes and pick up your syllabus. With it, you'll find a small packet that Jade did that can help you use your quirk more effectively. You all are dismissed. And with that, both teachers went away with Aizawa on their tail probably to sign his new contract. But Izuku stopped and said, and 1A, expect a new student tomorrow in Aizawa's place, he said before carrying on. Todoroki said, well, that was definitely something. I have to admit it was kinda satisfying seeing Midori expelling Aizawa-sensei. It's kinda funny. Aizawa from the side gave him an unimpressed look as he said, like how it was funny seeing you get kicked into general studies for half-assing it. You're lucky I didn't take notice of this, or you have taken Midori's place on the chopping block back then. This made the boy chuckle nervously knowing that this is very true. Minda said, why did that Izuku threaten me with expulsion? It's only natural for me to compliment girls. He was slapped by Tsuyu who said, don't be a perv, and he wouldn't have threatened you. 
Discord smiled at her as he said, You know that some versions of you date him. The girl's eyes went wide as she fell to the ground passed out with the girls from her class running to her. Momo looked at him and said, Please tell me you're joking. He shook his head and added, You too. The rich girl felt that she was about to throw up, but he carried on. But those versions of the little midget are respectable people who changed their perverted ways and stopped trying to put cameras in the girl's restroom. Momo sighed knowing that she wasn't dating a pervert, but that statement raised a couple of red flags regarding the camera bit. Izuku walked with Vlad to the teacher's lounge. Once they both entered it, Izuku fell to the ground as All Might said, Who was your first day my boy? Izuku looked at him with a panicked face, absolutely terrifying. He asked the blonde hero, Were you watching us during the assessment test? The blonde hero chuckled as Izuku said, Do you think I did the right thing regarding Todoroki? I mean I did come too harsh on him. I really didn't want to come off as a mean person, but he was holding back and refused to even tell why, so I had to take some steps to push to use the other half of his quirk. Vlad then said, I disagree with you. You did the best with what you could do at the moment. You even gave him a second chance, something Aizawa wouldn't. It's now up to him to decide whether he wants to be a hero or not. All Might then added, he's right, young Midoriya. You know that the world isn't a safe place, and heroes need to be ready to give it their all, or else they'll die for all their trouble. If young Todoroki doesn't learn from today, then he isn't fit to be a hero because he will eventually let someone die and kill himself in the process. Izuku nodded as he finally managed to calm his heart rate and asked All Might, So how's your plan for tomorrow coming along? Everyone began to murmur, as Izuku said, I have to admit that this will be my reaction if I was put through a case like this. It was so terrifying. I honestly thought that Todoroki was about to bury in the next ice age's worth of glaciers before I challenged you. The bicolored boy chuckled at this friend. Though internally he agreed with him, and I wonder who was as the student who will replace Eraserhead's place. This made Shinso give him an unimpressed look, and I wonder who Endeavor will react to the news about his son. He looked at the flame hero who answered the question, first, I'd probably berate Shoto. To that, the entire family nodded their heads, second, march down to the school for an explanation. Again they nodded, third, I'd probably train him harder. Discord then said, okay, let's move on before we enter uncharted areas, so what do you think of this world? Fourth Universe Discord swam through the air as he waited for them to talk. When Aizawa began, I admit that Problem Child rose to the occasion in this one. He was put into impossible odds where most people will most likely fail, but he preserved and carried on. The first day, in my opinion, went perfectly swell. He gave the students a lesson that they will never forget that appearance is deceiving regarding the debriefing. He gave them in class and then the beating. He stopped for a moment before adding, no further comments. The students agreed with the teacher, but then Vlad asked a very important question. That world said that the first year was to be considered a huge joint training exercise. So what happened in the battle combat? And the USJ for the example given that my students were also there this time around. In the background, Monoma could be heard cheering because in that world they had their fair share of action. He was sent to silence by a neck chop from Dabai who was sitting near him. The Chaos Lord nodded his head. Well for the combat exercise, it was the same as yours except each team consisted of a member from 1A and 1B and both Bakugo and Monoma were put on suspension due to their behavior during the exercise. Bakugo was put on suspension because he used his grenades on Kendo after she managed to beat him and his partner which was Kaibara, said boy groan knowing what his version went through and almost killing three students. Monoma for wanting to flex 1B's superiority, ignoring his partner's reasoning which was Shinzo on 1A, somehow managed to gain Shoto's quirk before the exercise and froze the building the training was happening in. Mina tilted her head as she asked, but Shoto did this, and he got scot-free. Discord shook his head. He got off due to his opponents not being affected by the cold. In this world, Monoma's opponents were Tsuyu and Satsuna, both are cold-blooded. When the entire building was iced, both girls' bodies began to experience hypothermia. And if it wasn't for both Vlad and Minimi of that world telling Monoma to heat the building, both girls might have died. This caused more than one person to throw a dirty glare in Monoma's direction as the boy himself tried to shrink into the ground. The only reason both weren't expelled was due to All Might personally asking for both to be given a second chance since everyone deserves one. Off course due to the suspension, they weren't present in the USJ. Everyone nodded their heads, while both boys seemed a little bit sad that they weren't in the USJ, but still happy because they weren't expelled due to the stunts that they both pulled and managed to survive the consequences of their action. Discord carried on. As for the USJ, it was the same All Might using his time on petty crime. This caused the symbol of peace to groan while AFO laughed with Tamura, Vlad, Aizawa, and Izuku were the teachers. The students got separated. Everyone survived the fight and managed to escape. But that brings us to the Namo. Unlike this world where it was sent to fight All Might, 
In this one the pity crime was arranged by AFO himself to distract the symbol of peace so Namu can kill Izuku. This made the blonde hero clutch his head in fear for his successor of that world. But Izuku with the help of Aizawa and the activation of Nana's quirk was able to send the Namu flying sky high. But that was after he destroyed both his arms to save the students. It was due to his actions that only he was injured. In this world, when Kurajiri tried to activate his quirk on 13, Izuku saw this and warned the hero who stopped her quirk just in time before helping it escape to bring help. Though let it be known that if it wasn't for Ibarra who was in the flood area whisking Izuku away after defeating Namu, Tamura might have dusted him. Everyone was shocked at how different was the USJ from their world, and how close to death's door their friend, and the girls, their crush, were. Itsuka responded by hugging the boy hard in fear that he might actually die. The boy himself was stunted at how one detail changed Tamura's mission entirely. With all might, he felt horrible in that world. Everything was a distraction to kill his successor and the villains almost succeeded. Tamura on the other hand snapped his fingers at the lost opportunity. The users of OFA were shocked at the extreme changes in that world. But Nana was happy that Izuku managed to survive. Mina trying to change to the subject from death said, Wait you said Ibarra saved him, does that mean they became a couple? Discord shook his head, no. You of that world asked him out after the first week, but Izuku refused saying that it's wrong for a teacher to have a relationship with his student, even though Nezu gave him a green light given that he was in the same age as his students. But Izuku still refused seeing it as abuse of his position. Mina nodded her head, as teachers all mentally praised that Izuku for his actions, even the villains were impressed. But then again, he was engaged at this point, so yeah this caused several girls' heads to snap. But Discord then said, alright, let's move to a brand new world. Both Shigaraki brothers applauded for the reference. The scenes began to change before it finally landed on something that read, Endeavor's son-in-law. This made the flame hero jump saying, What? Midoriya marries my little princess in that world. He looks at the boy and says, You better treat her right. The boy nodded his head as he tried to hide scooting closer to Kendo making the others jealous. Meanwhile, Fayumi was a blushing mess, not because she liked the boy, but because the subject itself was embarrassing. Shoto looked at him and said, Midoriya, I'd be more than happy for the son of All Might to marry my sister. In fact, I can arrange a marriage right after we arrive back in our world. Both Izuku and Fayumi yelled at him, don't say that so casually. Izuku looked to his side and saw both Dabai and Natsuo glaring at him causing him to ask himself what did he do to deserve this. Discord shook his head as he said, and whoever said it was Fayumi who Minimi was married to me. This caused a lot of confusion. Only Rei seemed to have an inkling of an idea of who was the lucky girl. Endeavor really hated this. He really hated going to the commission's special training grounds for children to use their quirks freely. But his public team told him that it might help him increase the reception of his image in the public which according to them, wasn't doing well or not well enough to outclass All Might with his stupid smile. He also secretly hoped that this little venture might convince his masterpiece to stop the childish rebellion it was making. Beside him, he was dragging a young 10-year-old girl with her hair equally split between red and white, its end was tied into a ponytail. She also had multicolored eyes where her left was blue while the right was gray. On the left side of her face was a burn mark. She was his youngest daughter Shauko Todoroki. It took only a moment for the males of both hero classes to register this before they exploded into laughter with Shoto plainly saying, Oh, so he's marrying me. Everyone was shocked at how casually he said it. But he then stood up, marched to his mom, and sat in her lap as he buried his face into her chest with the woman chuckling seeing her son perhaps for the first time blush in his life. She petted him and said, Come on Shoto, I'm sure it's not that bad. Shoto only moaned in embarrassment as both Dabai and Natsuo were snickering beside him. Fayumi herself was trying to hold in her laughter. But Endeavor only shrugged at the development because to him, Shoto is Shoto, be it a girl or a boy. The girls, on the other hand, weren't so sure how to process this. On one hand, they were jealous of Shoto, on the other, it was funny as hell. Izuku meanwhile was trying to comprehend this as he looked at his other self and said, you're worse than Shigaraki, as least he wants to kill me not embarrass me. The Chaos Master laughed with Nezu as the scene carried on. And he looked at his daughter and said, Look Shauko, learn from them and see how better you are. How you are going to carry on my legacy. And defeat All Might. The girl merely glared at him as children began to pool in the arena to fight a bunch of robots made for ten-year-olds. And he had to admit that this was the most boring time of his life. He was treated to the spectacle of seeing various children defeat one robot only to be stomped by twelve other robots. It was a waste of time, to say the least. He wasn't impressed at all with them. He was about to leave seeing that he and his daughter finally agreed on something for once. But HSPC representative said, Please endeavor, I promise you the next pair will be quite interesting, to say the least. The hero grunted and sat down. The field then announced the name of the next pair of children, Izuku Midoriya and Katsuki Bakugo. Please enter the field to test your abilities. 
back Hugo then jumped saying, wait, there's a place where I can train my quirk. He looked at his mom and yelled, how come you never took me there, you hack? This was met almost immediately by a punch as Mitsuki yelled back, if you weren't such a self-entitled brat then I would have taken you there. Every time I tried to tell you, you'd say I don't help from a bunch of extras to master my quirk and never allow me to finish. The boy simmered down. Izuku who was silent then jumped happily saying, wait, I'm there so that means I have a quirk. The boy began to cry as Itsuka hugged him with Iri. Don't cry Izuku, you're great with or without a quirk. The boy smiled at Itsuka as he said, thanks, Ken. Itsuka, the girl said with little redness on her cheeks making the boy blink. I call you by your first name. It's only fair you call me by mine. The boy smiled awkwardly as he said, thanks K. I mean Itsuka. Meanwhile, a certain girl was simmering with anger. That was supposed to be my moment with Deku. I'm sure one of those world Deku is my boyfriend, so I'll just have to wait before I have my chance. Hiri looked at Izuku and asked, Deku, you're going to marry that girl right? The boy blinked at the question but nodded. The girl then asked, so does that mean she's my mommy too? The boy was shocked and didn't know what to do, so he said, no, Iri. She's not here so she can't be your mother, but once she comes back she will be. The girl nodded her head excitedly about having another mother. The boy only hoped that this won't become a trend. And G scratched his head as he vaguely remembered a man named Hasashi Midoriya with curly black hair. And freckles that can breathe fire was in general studies when he was in the hero course back in his Yua days. But other than that he didn't recall much. He suspected the Midoriya boy had some fire breathe related quirk. But that wasn't really impressive. The exercise began as the blonde haired blasted away destroying the robots. But the Midoriya kid surprised him when he lifted his arm and blasted blue fire from his hand. Both he and Shauko stood up remembering Talia, but instead of burning the robots were frozen in place with ice on them. This caught Inji's attention. The boy then summoned red flames that engulfed his body turning his hands into demon claws of red fire. His feet and two sharp-toed feet from red fire gave him a spiked tail of fire and flaming wings. The boy then flew through robots slashing them left and right. He was then up in the air as he activated green flames in his hands making a bow an arrow and raining the robots with flaming green arrows. But then he added a blue taint to the green arrow which caused the robots now when the arrows hot them to freeze. And Ji now was fully invested in what was happening. He looked at his new intern Burnin and told, Go to the testing field. I want to see both of the boys' abilities, especially the green-haired one. The flamed-haired girl flashed him a thumbs up before saying, You got it, boss man. She left as the boy unleashed a huge breath of orange fire burning some robots as the other kid yelled at him for hogging all the fun. Everyone blinked at how strong Izuku's quirk of that world was, as the boy himself was writing down notes. So red flames give me some type of demon mode. Orange are regular flames, blue is ice fire, green is for making shapes and objects. I guess the regular flames and ice ones help maintain my body temperature like Shoto so I don't overheat or experience hypothermia. From the looks of it, I can also combine both flames to have more effects. They rebooped him on the nose as she said, Daddy, you're muttering. AFO scratched his head wondering how such a quirk wasn't taken by him, but he only shrugged it to the Midoriya family having a different doctor other than Koyudai. Endeavor himself was shocked at this quirk. If it existed in his world, it would have made Izuku the strongest flame user out there with how versatile the quirk seemed to be. This is a strong quirk. A gloomy aura enveloped him, but this means I signed my daughter in a quirk marriage. I'm really scum. Ray proceeded to comfort him by saying, at least it was to someone who would take care of her and treat her well, not to some random guy in your agency. Back with Izuku, he looked at a pissed off Bekugo. Deku, stop destroying the robots. I want to test my skills too. Sorry, but wasn't you who said you're going to beat me? He scratched his chin as he said, Gas, you admit defeat then. Bakugo looked at him with a demonic look with little sparks coming from his hands. He was about to attack when green flames came right at him and Izuku causing the green-haired boy to erect a wall of green flames as Bakugo said, Great work nerd. That's why you'll become my favorite psychic. This irked Izuku a little, but he swallowed it as something jumped over the green wall of flames and landed behind them. The boys looked and saw what seemed to be a flame-haired girl with sharp teeth smirking at them. So both of you are that managed to catch the boss's attention. She looked them straight in the eye saying, I'm not impressed, but here's your chance to impress little kids. She then sent a torrent of green flames toward them, but Katsuki jumped out of the way while Izuku blasted a wall of bluish-orange flames as he erected a wall of ice. The Endeavor nodded his head. He seems very proficient in using his quirk. Combining the flames, using them individually, really tells you that he was training them for a long time. The man began to visualize what would be the quirks of their children in that world earning him a slap on the back of the head from his wife saying, Bad Inji the man frowned. It was then that Vlad King pointed something out. Doesn't that ice seems a little off? 
I mean normally Todoroki's ice is white, but this one seems. The others nodded as Izuku said. Well combining the flames give different results. So maybe if I combine my regular flames with the blue flames, it gives us hot ice. The others rubbed their heads unable to process how he was able to do it and analyze quirks on the fly. AFO applauded him as he said, Truly impressive young Midoriya. To be able to analyze quirks on the fly is such a wonderful gift. Are you sure that you didn't have an analysis quirk before you were given OFA? The boy didn't respond, but he grabbed Yuri and hugged her tighter, as All Might and OFA users growled at the 200-year-old villain. Back in the observation room, Endeavor watched the battle and wiped his sweat due to the red ice the green-haired boy was able to produce. The ice defied the laws of thermodynamics, but it was there. He saw the end of the fight where the boy unleashed grayish-blue flames against his intern who was distracted by the blonde boy only to be caught in the ice. He wasn't really bothered, but then the flame Sunmo's head began to flicker out as if there was a force that was shutting them off. This tipped him that the grayish color wasn't for show. Finally, the boy walked to her and freed her. He quickly emitted a golden flame from his body that covered him, Burnin, and Bakugo which healed their injuries. The flame hero said, I want all information about the boy. The HSPC representative gave him a clipboard with the essentials regarding the boy's age, birth date, where he lives, and more stuff the hero wasn't interested in. He then saw his quirk and read it. Quirk multi-flame. Give the user different type of flames depending on the color. Orange flames are regular fire. Blue flames give him the ability to develop ice. Red flames give him demonic features. Green flames are used to create objects from stamina. Gray flames cause any person hit with them to lose the ability to use their quirk. Golden flames are used to heal people. Black flames are highly dangerous. Given their violate nature, can erase anything it faces if the user wants to, and can't be turned off unless the user wants to. The hero blinked as he set down the paper. Shauko on the other hand scowled as her father took interest in someone with a flame's quirk. But she then thought about it if she manages to beat that boy with her ice then she can prove that she can become a hero without his fire. Endeavor looked at the representative. I want to talk to the boys now. The man nodded his head and went to bring them. Even though it was Izuku's quirk that attracted his attention, Bakugo did decently with his fight against Burnin, so he decided to talk to him too. Izuku rubbed his chin as he said, so this me trains with Endeavor. He was about to say cool, but remembered what Shoto told him, ah, damn it. Shoto looked from his mother's chest and said, damn it indeed. He then earned a light whack from his mom as he then snuggled some more into her. The flame hero only sighed in sadness knowing what was to come. It only took two minutes for the boys to come. And they seemed that they were about to rip each other apart, or at least the blonde one seemed like that. The flame hero cleared his throat as he said, Hi there, brats. After that awkward introduction, a tense silence filled the room, but then Izuku broke as he began to fanboy. All the hero students began to laugh at the boy who groaned in embarrassment. You're the flame hero, Endeavor. You're known for single-handedly solving the largest amounts of cases over the last four years. You're my idol especially given how much control you have over your quirk. A lot of people say that you cause too much property, but that's definitely not the case given how you beat a guy who can control fire streams two weeks ago with only one store burnt. And this goes to show how much skill you have. He then pulled a notebook and asked, can you sign it please? The flame hero was shocked but also felt his ego go up a few notches given that no one actually knew how much hard work he put into his quirk. Regarding the signature, he wanted to say no, but he wanted to get in the boy's good graces, so he nodded. He was about to take the notebook, but the blonde boy yanked the green one away. The blonde then said, yeah nice try. That might work on fanboy over here, but it won't on me, so do tell me what you really want from us. You're usually a huge dick toward fans, so why the sudden change? Endeavor was once again shocked, but he had to admit that this boy was keen and street smart. This caused his interest in the second boy to grow. For what the boy lacked in the strength of quirk, he more than made it up in street smarts. Bakugo smirked as he looked at Izuku saying, See nerd, that's why we don't trust anyone on the get-go. Izuku chuckled awkwardly as he was playing with Iri's hair who was purring happily while Kendo played with Izuku's hair and she looked at the scene and said, Well, I have to admit that normally I would be blunter than that, but it seems this version of myself is playing it safe to win both boys over. Dabai nodded his head remembering the day his father told him he was nothing other than a failure which caused him to go into the forest and set himself ablaze. The burnt man spoke, true, and I hope I have fun burning your protege of that world. Izuku shivered at the bloodlust directed toward him, or at least that version of himself. The bloodlust disappeared when Fayumi whacked her older brother on the head saying, Don't do that Taoya. The boy groaned as he looked away from them with a frown on his face. The flame hero then went into business mode, straight to the point I see, well have it your way. He then straightened himself up as he said, I was impressed by both of you during this little training of yours, so what I want to say is that I want to train both of you, so you can become heroes. He looked at Izuku as he mentally added, and maybe something more with you, perhaps a worthy successor for the Todoroki family. 
Both boys went wide as they cheered on due to the fact that a pro hero wanted to train them personally. But then Izuku noticed something or rather someone. Who's that? The flame hero looked behind him and saw his daughter trying to hide in the shadows. Boys meet my youngest daughter Shauko. He then looked at his daughter and took on his friendly father mood or his equivalent of it. Shauko, come and say hi to your new training partners. The girl glared at her father but sighed saying in a flat tone, Hi, I'm Shauko Todoroki. Nice to meet you. Silence filled the atmosphere as Izuku tilted toward Bakugo saying. Awkward the other boy couldn't help, but not. The flame hero silently cursed his luck. Well boys, how about we go meet your mothers so we can we make it official that I'm training both of you. Normally, he wouldn't care much about the parents' consent, but given his plans for Izuku, he wanted to get in his mother's good graces, and maybe perhaps see if he can maybe persuade his father to agree to his plans. Ray gave her husband a sad look. Really Enji, do you honestly think that you can buy people just like you bought my parents? The flame hero sighed miserably as he said, I know, but I'm not him at least. If it helps, I scraped my plans to marry Shoto off to the Yeirazu girl weeks ago. Momo looked at him incredulously as if he lost his mind. To her, even if her parents agreed, she won't. She isn't some cheap bottle of booze that he's going to buy from the closest drink vendor. Shoto looked up at his dad and glared, you're joking right. The man fidgeted a little as he nodded his head. He somehow managed to make his relationship with his son normal again. He didn't want to ruin it due to a slip of his tongue. Natsuo looked at his dad. Something tells me he's not kidding Discord clapped his hand. Okay moving on before we enter unwanted areas of how corrupt the human society which we will see in the worlds that Izuku teams up or is taught everything he knows by stain. Izuku's eyes went wide, but he gulped as he sent a silent prayer to the Ada of those worlds, while the boy himself looked on the verge of mental breakdown, stain and Midoriya teaming up. This is the worst nightmare ever for any hero. It's been a year since Izuku and Katsuki began to train with the flame hero. The boys were trained to the bone. Nothing was too much to the man. He would put them in near-impossible situations where he wanted them to win. Bruises were far and many on the bodies, but in the end, it helped. Izuku's gained more mastery over all his flames. His orange fire can now become hotter if concentrated. His stamina-related fires were now stronger and required less energy. His ice fire was now stronger as he could make now flames in sub-zero temperature, and he gained more control over his black flames. Bakugo on the other hand refined his techniques and learned how to control his explosions better than before. But one time during this something happened. Izuku was doing his regular training when he was given a break time by the hero. He walked outside only to see Shaoko training her eyes. The thing was that the girl was about to freeze over due to the amount of frost that covered her right side. The boy ran to her and said, Todoroki, you need to stop. You're hurting yourself. Let me warm you up. The girl pushed him away saying, I don't need his fire. I don't need your help, so go away from me. The girl tried to put up a tough act, but given her entire frame was shaking, she wasn't convincing that much. The girl tried to stand up to continue her training, but grayish green fire wrapped around her hands. She frowned heavily. She still remembered the description of his quirk. He then said, stay still while I warm you up. The girl turned her head away as she tried to kick herself free only to see that she was bounded now by her legs. The boy then began to use his orange flames to warm her up. You know you should seriously know your limits and don't push too much. The girl in return scoffed. Well, if it isn't a kettle calling the pot black, have you seen yourself? My dad is beating you black and blue every day. The boy in return shrugged making the girl's eyes go wide. Really, you don't have a problem with being beat around like that. It's not that I like, but if you think about better to be beat around by your father other than to be beat around by villains who will kill me. The girl pouted as she looked away and was freed from her shackles, I guess you're right. The girl then mentally said, but that doesn't excuse the abuse he put us through. Unknown to her, Fayumi watched the entire interaction. The older girl was shocked when she saw a small yet visible blush on her sister's face causing her to smile. Oh my god, Shauko has a crush. I really hope they get together. They seem so cute. Shoto began to groan harder at the embarrassment he was facing. His sister squealed in happiness. Oh, little Shauko developed a crush when the boy helped her after she was frozen. It seems like a story from a fairy tale book. Bakugo smirked as he looked at Shoto. Hey, icy hot bastard. The dual colored boy looked at him. Do you want to cuddle with your prince charming? The explosion user began to howl in laughter at the expense of the dual quirked boy. His mother, on the other hand, found the entire situation really amusing. Her son wasn't known to be embarrassed easily. Hell, even if you walked on him inside the bathroom, he wouldn't be embarrassed. At most he would be annoyed and tell you to get out. She looked at him as he tried to disappear away from everyone and laughed softly. She then began to play with his hair. She looked to her side only to see Natsuo coming closer to tease him with Taoya borderline exploding wanting to join in the fun his siblings were experiencing. It's been four years since the flame hero has taken both Izuku and Katsuki under his wing to train them. Both have excelled and gone beyond their limits to become the strongest they can be. 
They were both 10 months away from the entrance exam. Izuku was taking the recommendation test while Katsuki was taking the regular one. While both boys wanted to take the regular one, the flame hero insisted that the green-haired boy take the recommendation test. Bakuga wasn't bothered too much by it since he didn't actually care. Now, they were in their mentor's house as he called them for something important, at least that is what he said. They sat in front of him with Shauko at his side as he looked at them. Finally, he broke the silence, Midoriya, I want you to marry my daughter. The man said in the bluntest way possible. Both boys looked at each other and echoed the same response, what? Meanwhile Shauko looked at the ground with an emotion other than anger, it was sadness. I guess I'm the new breeding factory for trophy children for Endeavor's masterpiece. She stooped a little before adding, now, I know how Taoya felt when I came around. Huh, that was a little blunt on my end. The flame hero said earning a couple of looks that basically said, You think Izuku rubbed his forehead? Okay, I honestly don't know where this came from, or why now. But I can't. I'm still too young for marriage, and so is Shauko. Plus shouldn't we agree to this beforehand or at least get to know each other, or go on dates? The flame hero had foreseen this type of response so he prepared something just in case. He nudged his daughter. The girl glared at him so he spoke. You see I don't want you to get married now, but more of an engagement. I still want you to focus on your hero career, so the of you next week will be engaged and get to know each other. He looked at the boy who was still not convinced. So he added, if it helps, you can ask her and she'll tell you how much she wants it. The girl glared and she glared hard. And if looks can kill her dad would be inside a coffin right now. She wanted to be a hero with her eyes, not some type of trophy wife, but even now she can't have what she wanted. She felt weak and that her life was hopeless. She was knocked out of her self-pity as she heard Izuku asking her something. She wanted to hate him, she really did. But given the confused expression he had all this time, she could tell he wasn't keen on this. But knowing her father he was going to say yes whether he wanted that or not. And so was her, I'm sorry I wasn't paying attention, can you please repeat what you said? Mina pouted, man, look at female Todoroki's face. She means so sad as if she knew that she doesn't have a choice in the whole thing. Other girls nodded their heads in agreement. Shoto grabbed their attention. That's because she doesn't have a choice. The girls looked at him with confusion visible on their faces. In my family, my dad's word is final, so if he told her to marry that version of Midori, she'll marry him unless she wants to face the consequences of defying him. Honestly, her fate was sealed from the moment Midoriya grabbed his attention. It's kinda sad really. Izuku meanwhile felt like a scumbag for being a part of a quirk marriage even if he didn't know about it. He then heard Shoto say, Midoriya, it's not your fault. There's no way you would've had an idea what my dad was planning to begin with. I wouldn't be too surprised if he hadn't spent weeks and days trying to marry that me off before he found you. The green-haired boy smiled and nodded his head. What do you want to do? And do you truly want this? I won't force you if you don't want to. I mean you have to be comfortable about this at the end of the day, Izuku said, and the girl can sense how sincere he was in his words, so she knew at this moment that she wanted to gain her chance in achieving her dream. I want to be a hero, the girl said plain and simple which Izuku smiled at saying, that's really wonderful Shauko, and do you want to marry me? You didn't answer that. The girl sighed she wanted to tell him that she had no choice, but instead just nodded her head because there's no point in trying to fight it. Izuku then said, Okay, if you're okay with it then I don't see why not give it a try, though if you want to back out at any moment, feel free to do it. The girl nodded again. The flame hero then said, Shauko, are you sure you want to be a hero? This is a dangerous proficient that could get you killed, so how about you don't and just study at a normal course? The girl glared at him since she knew why he didn't want her to go to the hero course because she refused to use his cursed flame. She was about to reply when Izuku spoke on her behalf. I think it's a great idea for her to be in the hero course. I mean she's strong and she can look after herself and so am I, but we both can get a little carried away at times, so I really think you should allow her to join. Endeavor went over his choice for a moment before nodding. He was this close to upstaging All Might, so he can't let this little hiccup stop him. The flame hero said, well then, let's call your mom to tell her the news. The boy paled as he said, mom's going to have her lead flip off. I guess in this world I didn't want Shoto to be involved in heroics since I found a replacement and didn't want her to kill herself like what happened with Taoya. And she spoke as Dabai shook his head knowing the real reason was wanting really powerful grandchildren. Izuku then said, It's really weird knowing that out there I marry Todoroki. The bicolored boy nodded his head. Discord popped out beside Izuku and Kendo. Well enough of that, let's see what you think. Fifth universe there was an awkward silence filling the room. It was not every day that you see a girl version of one of your classmates marrying another of your classmates. Shoto took a deep breath and spoke first saying, Man, I never felt this embarrassed in my life, even when I caught a glimpse of the forbidden during the final exams with Yegarazu. The girl blushed remembering when she made the scarf required to capture Aizawa. She had to be exposed a little, she thought that he didn't see her. The boy carried on. 
All right, I think that this version of myself will have a very interesting relationship with Midori. On one hand, she loves him deeply given that he was the first gentle fire user she met, and hates him due to him being Dan's protege. Discord nodded as Todoroki had a question. What will that version of myself say to him in the sports festival given that I know that he isn't All Might's son in that world? The boy was smacked by his mom telling him not to say crazy stuff as she remembered when one time Endeavor said that All Might is the secret love child of the pro, Maverick, she shook her head fondly at the memory. It seems that crazy conspiracy theories run deep in her family. Discord smiled. Well, to be honest, the conservation you had after he managed to bring forth your fire was the equivalent of you telling him that you can't decide if he was your mom or your dad. This made the boy tilt his head confused till Discord explained. Listen, this version of you like you said couldn't hate or love him. She told him that his gentle touch, the way he treats like a human being, his support of her dream being a hero, and his overall kindness reminds her of her mother, but the thing that reminded of her father was his flames. She told him that she was going to beat him and prove that her fire was unnecessary. But Izuku told her that he would support her regardless of the outcome. Of course no surprise, he beat from here to Rome, but just like you he helped her use her flames which made her finally fall in love with him and burn away all the hatred from her icy cold heart. Shoto smiled, but then frowned. I bet my father of that world was more than happy when she told him that she was in love with that version of Midori. Well not exactly, Discord corrected him. You see after the conservation with that version of you, he encountered Endeavor and had a very interesting talk. Let's say Endeavor had a lot of things to think about after that his talk. But in the end, he became a better father and tried to redeem himself. The flame hero was happy. And so was his wife as a version of him was trying to do better. Benny me, any words? Discord looked at his version who was now braiding Itsuka's hair while the girl herself was braiding Yuri's hair. The boy looked at him and stroked his chin. Well, I don't know what to say. This world is really interesting and I wonder what will happen. But given it, I can safely say that this version is quite strong and that marrying that version of Todoroki was weird, but quite expected. The boy chuckled. Honestly, I'd be more shocked if there's a world where Kakin is a girl, and she's in love with me but bullies me because she wants to protect me. Bakugo on the side had his face turn red from anger, but he calmed his breathing down. Discord laughed as he said, You don't know how much that is true my little heroic friend. Discord clapped his hand saying, Alright let's move on to a new version of Izuku. The worlds then began to rotate till they finally landed on a title that made Bakugo explode laughing and the girls to gain blush while wishing to be the lucky girl. Heroic parents and training Bakugo was now on his knees as he was hitting the ground, and said, I can't believe it, Deku in that world got laid. That's so hilarious. I bet the hobo had a blast on the first day when Deku came in with his girl and baby in tow. Discord nodded as he added, You don't even know that half of it. For example, in the entrance exam, Ida chose of telling Izuku's girl to throw the baby in the orphanage or he will do it for her. Ida paled that he would say something so horrible while his brother facepalmed so that led Ida to have a first-hand experience of the second user of OFAS quirk. The second user jumped, Hey, how did that happen? I never agreed to give him my quirk and I still don't. Discord pointed at Nana as he said, She was pissed off when Ida told Izuku's girl to get rid of her baby, so she grabbed you and forced you to activate your quirk. And you were wise enough to keep in mind the saying hell knows no fury than that of a scorned woman. And for some reason, Izuku reached the singularity quite faster in that world. Now why? I don't know. But I think it was because Izuku started training four months before he met All Might by cleaning the beach that he cleaned in your world, so he had OFA earlier, and well, you get it. The second user then slumped with a frown while Nana was smiling for helping Izuku keep his child safe. Now, be quiet so the world can begin. The scene began to shift as Discord added, and you won't believe who is the mother. Two people could be seen walking in a hallway with their hands down. One of those two was a boy with curly green hair and diamond-shaped freckles on his face. The boy was currently carrying a bag that resembled a baby bag. The other was a girl with beautiful features, but what stood out about her was her vine-like hair that almost reached the ground. On the girl's chest was a baby carrier that was strapped there. Eyes widened as 1B students looked at the severely blushing girl who couldn't even manage to get out words. Discord then said, It's explanation time. Listen kiddies what happened was simple enough. I bar over there, he said pointing to the now human raspberry. Went to a party to prove to the kids in her school that she can have fun, in other words, she gave in to peer pressure. Shishida warned her not to, but she persisted. She took a bottle of wine from the orphanage she grew up at thinking that she won't get drunk if she drank from it. She was wrong as she overestimated her ability to handle her alcohol. And that wine is still alcohol at the end of the day. At the same time, Izuku was invited and he came given that he was quirkless, and he knew that this was a rare chance for him to meet people. In the end, both of them got drunk, met, talked with each other, and well, I guess you can see what happened after that. Ibarra raised her hand asking, did he stay with me? 
Discord shook his head. No when Izuku came back, he bolted but left a small note apologizing for what happened. Of course, at first, you hated him. But the father of the church where you lived after he calmed you down telling you that God is merciful and you aren't condemned to hell. And that God forgave people for way worse things. Explained to you that night wouldn't have happened if you two didn't want it citing that you still remember his name and the name of his school meaning that both of you were somber enough not to do it. Of course, after that, you wanted to find him to talk about what happened, but you found out you were pregnant, so Shishida literally sniffed him out. In the end, you moved in with him, and you both loved each other, so yeah. The religious girl was still blushing but nodded. She then felt someone tug on her clothes. She looked down to Siri who asked her, Does that mean that you're now my mom too? The vine-haired girl smiled softly saying, Of course sweetie, now let's go sit with dad. The little horned girl grabbed her arm and took her excitedly to Izuku saying, Look daddy, I have a new mommy now. The boy smiled as he tried to control his reactions. He looked at Itsuka who gave him a shit-eating grin. But Discord said, Do you know Kendo in the world where you were quirkless? You also had a biological kid with Izuku other than Iri. The girl's face heated up, but she silently asked for a picture. The Chaos Master then gave her a picture of him. Itsuka felt her heart melting when saw her son. She put the picture in her wallet, and Discord allowed her to keep it. Ibarra then sat beside Izuku and laid her head on his shoulder as Izuku turned seeing a waste, Kaminari, and Minda glaring at him while Shishida was holding a sign that said please take care of my childhood friend. The boy nodded to Shishida who smiled sadly since he had a crush on the girl. In the baby carrier was a seven-month-old girl that had emerald green eyes like his father but had specks of forest green in there too. The baby also had X-shaped freckles on her face. The hair on the top of her head was similar to that of her mother, but currently, the baby was trying to chew her mother's hair much to the girl's amusement. Shizaki asked, I wonder how his mother reacted knowing that Izuku was going to become a father. Both versions of Izuku shivered knowing how emotional their mother can be. Discord chuckled awkwardly. Well, let's say she was pissed at first. She accused you of lying and trying to take advantage of her son due to reason. The girl nodded knowing that he meant Izuku's quirklessness, but when DNA tests showed that you were telling the truth, well she begrudgingly accepted you move in. At first, she ignored you, but with time she mellowed out. The girl nodded understanding where Izuku's mom was coming from. Meanwhile, the woman herself was disappointed in herself for treating the girl like that. Toru then said, ignoring everything, your baby with Zuku is so cute, I wish I could just pinch her little cheeks. The vine girl snuggled further into Izuku causing three reactions. Izuku's blush increased, Itsuka got jealous and snuggled herself into Izuku, and the girls on the side became jealous. Shizaki sighed, it's quite the misfortunate that the babysitter bailed on us. The girl frowned as their babysitter bailed on them for the fifth time. They were paying her good money, but she kept bailing on them, we should really look for someone else. Izuku nodded his head as he looked at his daughter and smiled as he ruffled her hair. The little girl began to squirm as she tried to reach out to Izuku who took her. He looked at his vine-haired girlfriend who pouted at her daughter being a daddy's girl, yeah, you're right. I heard from All Might that we have internships and work studies so we need to find someone to take care of her when we're missing. He said as he kissed his daughter's cheeks. The girl smiled nodding her head. She then checked her surroundings asking him, so how's your progress with the second's quirk? The girl already knew about OFA and its secrets. When All Might knew that his pupil was going to be a father, he remembered Nana and told him to bring the girl over to tell her everything. Nana looked at her pupil. I have to say Tashinori that was a wise move on your end. It was better than mine for that matter. She looked at her grandson who noticed her and flipped her off making the woman frown. All Might smiled that his version made a good choice for once and was happy that his successor progressed faster in this world. Izuku currently was wondering what was the second's quirk, since he didn't know it along with the third's. The boy smiled. Gear shift. The ability to change the speed of the target you chose was something really hard to master especially with the second acting like a child and refusing to give Izuku any type of advice. And he felt quite smug whenever Izuku harmed himself. That attitude lasted for a day before Yoichi convinced him to help with some bonks from Nana. I have to admit that it was hard at first especially with some people being children about it, but I managed to do it. Thank God, I just hope you don't break yourself. I can't take it, Ibarra said. The boy smiled as he said, I can't do that. I have to take care of you and Fubuki. What kind of father will I be if I broke myself every time I use my quirk? Ibarra smiled remembering how the boy sold his All Might collection. It felt heartbreaking. The vine girl was sure if she was forced to sell her Bible collection, she would have flooded the apartment as he did. She poked him with her vine saying, I can take care of myself, thank you very much. Bakko's eyes were wide as he stuttered. The nerd sold his All Might collection. One time I tried to touch it, and he almost ripped my arm off, and that was after he got diagnosed quirkless. He turned to the boy yelling, What the heck Deku? You sell your All Might collection for some shitty baby, and you won't aloe. The boy didn't get to continue as a zipper appeared on his mouth. 
He looked at Discord who signaled him to be silent. Satsuna interjected, Okay, Bakugo's ego aside, how come Ibarra is so cool with the entire situation? I mean I get it that the priest helped her come to terms, but she feels a little bit too comfortable if you ask me. All the girls who knew Ibarra nodded, even Ibarra herself was slightly intrigued. Discord smiled as he said, I was wondering when someone was going to ask that question. He clapped his hands again. Well, you see even after the priest helped calm her down, the girl was still panicking in regards to what happened and more so when she found out that she was pregnant. But after meeting Izuku and seeing the effort he was putting into this, she knew that she can't just sit around sulking. So she shoved those dark feelings down and decided to use them to be a motive for her to be a good mother and make sure that her daughter won't do the same mistakes that she did. Ibarra was happy that this version of herself learned from her mistakes and tried to become better. Izuku smiled at her words and handed her Fubuki as he brought a baby bottle full of milk and handed it over to Ibarra. The girl was confused till the little girl in her arms began hitting her in the chest signaling that she was hungry. The girl blushed as she took in the bottle and began to feed her daughter. She's quite the eater. I'm sure that I just fed her before we came here. Izuku shrugged, but something caught both teens' attention. It was someone waving his hands toward them. He had a huge coat of brown fur and canine teeth coming from his lower jaw. It was Jorida Shishida, Ibarra's friend from school. The beast-looking teen smiled. Greetings, Lady Shizaki, Sir Midoriya. I hope you had a lovely morning. He then noticed the little girl. She bailed on you again. Both teens sadly nodded. Shishida scratched his forehead. Well, I guess it makes sense given that I went with Lady Shizaki to the same junior high. Izuku smiled. But that won't stop us. This just means that our daughter will watch us being heroes. Shizaki nodded at the enthusiasm Izuku was emitting causing Shishida to chuckle a little. The beast boy walked into the classroom labeled 1A. Before any questions can be asked, different worlds mean different members. Sometimes Minda doesn't exist so someone like Shinzo, Himiko, or Talia takes their place. Sometimes the entire arrangement is mixed up like this one. Or Izuku is simply in 1B while Monoma, Kendo, Pony, or Rin takes his place in 1A. Everyone nodded as they watched the scene continue to unfold. Ibarra and Izuku now stood in front of the first step to begin their hero journey, but for some reason, they walk inside the room. Perhaps, it was the fear of being rejected. Teen parents aren't exactly something you see every day. And given the bullying that they both endured, it didn't help at all. Izuku looked at Ibarra who looked away. Shizaki, were you actually bullied? The girl didn't answer as she began to remember all the horrible words that she endured for most of her life for her fate. She was sure if she hadn't had Shishida by her side, she would have taken that swan dive. The girl began to feel tears trickling in her eyes. I it's and nothing to w worry about. She then felt Izuku hugging her. You don't have to put a tough front for me, because I know how it feels to be targeted for no apparent reason, so let it out. The girl let out a couple of sobs as she silently cried into Izuku's arm with both Hitsuka and Uri hugging her. Once she stopped, Izuku asked, Do you feel better, Shizaki? The girl smiled at him, of course, and please call me Ibarra. The boy blushed given that this was the second girl that asked him to call her by her name but not it. She then said, And Izuku. What followed was considered the boldest thing that the Vine girl ever did. She closed the gap between her and Izuku giving him a small peck on the lips effectively stealing his first kiss. Everyone who knew her was shocked, and even the girl herself, but given that she just saw a teenage mother version of herself, she thinks that she wasn't that bold. This enraged Itsuka who was beside him all this time for three worlds. I never knew Ibarra could be this bold. But what happened to our agreement that we decide who gets to have his first kiss? Unbeknownst to Izuku, the 1B girls unlike their 1A counterparts, who were also in a competition to grab his attention, decided if one of them gets to have him, she will share him with the others. But Ibarra just broke one of the clauses regarding the first kiss where they agreed that they all decide who gets to have his first kiss. Ibarra, who was now blushing as a tomato, seeing what she had done sent out a small apology to the rest of her classmates who sighed. But Kendo seeing that his first kiss was already gone decided to have her own. She felt heat rise to her cheeks, but pressed forward, Izuku. The blushing boy turned toward her only to have another pair of lips smack onto his as Kendo said, Thank you for letting me sit beside you. She looked away quickly as Iri's eyes were both shining seeing that her dad and moms loved each other so much. Izuku on the other hand, I I was KK kissed by T2B beautiful G girls. Discord whistled saying, All right, people, let's keep this family friendly. I don't want rugrats crawling around. They may be teenage parents, but that doesn't mean you have to. The three teens turned to blushing messes as the others laughed. They both tried to enter, but their feet refused to enter. Ibarra looked at Izuku with a smile saying, We can't enter yet. We have to check if we have all of Fubuki's needs for the day. The boy nodded as Ibarra began to list some items beginning from milk bottles to diapers. Finally, Ibarra frowned saying, We have to do this, don't we? The boy nodded sadly as they both entered into the unknown. The moment they entered all eyes were on them. 
The reaction was immediate the moment Fubuki looked at them tilting her vine-covered head as she sucked on her pacifier and shook the rattle that her mother gave her just in case she was frightened by the new faces. The girls swarmed the little girl who began to whine in fear. Ibarra was quick to act, as she held her daughter close trying to keep her calm. Izuku cleared his voice. Can you please keep it down, girls? Our daughter isn't used to new faces. This caused all the girls to look at him confused. One of the girls who seemed to have mushroom-like hair asked. What do you mean by our daughter? Bakugo was howling in laughter. I just want to see how are you going to save yourself from this, Deku. Izuku couldn't help but agree with Bakugo wondering how will he be able to run damage control. Todoroki chuckled a little. Imagine if one of them in a panicking moment says that they're in a quirk marriage. This caused a shiver to run down Izuku's spine as he looked at Todoroki wondering why did he have to jinx them. Both teens blushed a storm. Izuku gulped. Yeah, Fubuki is my daughter and she's also Ibarra's daughter. Izuku tried to put up a strong front to protect their dignity. A girl with a huge black ponytail came in front of him. The girl began to examine him and Ibarra. Are you sure that you two are in the hero course? I mean you're both pretty young to be parents, and the hero course is going to keep you busy. She walked away. No hard feelings, but you should drop out to take care of her. Maybe come back in a year or two when she's old enough. A voice then echoed. Hey, Ponytail, who died and made you queen of this class? Do you think just because you come from a fancy schmancy school, you get to determine who deserves to be here? Everyone looked to an ashen blonde boy who was snarling. Next time, you talk to my niece like that I'll blast you all the way to hell. Izuku was shocked that Bakugo stood up to him, as Bakugo was shocked himself. How? Why? I mean I made his life hell most of the time. Why did I stand up for him? Discord shook his head. Well for most yes, but in this world just like many others, you didn't see yourself as bullying him rather you were training with him. The boy tilted his head confused. What? Discord wanted to carry on till Momo interjected. I see, Bakugo's version of that world knew that if Izuku wanted to become a quirkless hero he needed to train hard, so he began to bully him thinking that he was helping him. And I guess that he made some bad friends on the way which used this as a way to bully Izuku. She turned to the boy. I apologize for the words I said, Zuzu. Can you forgive me? The boy blushed at the nickname that he still hadn't gotten used to, but nodded. Bakugo was about to scoff, but Discord nodded. True, and it was only after Bakugo threatened a pregnant Ibarra causing Izuku to stand up to him that he actually understood what he was doing was all types of wrong. Yeah, that's not a manly thing to say. A red-haired student said only to be followed by another silver-haired one. Yeah, I think it's really manly for them to take care of their daughter while being hero students. The two looked at each other and high-fived each other. The black-haired girl taken aback by this raised her hands defending herself, I didn't mean it like that. I just think that should focus on taking care of their daughter, and maybe in a year or two they can join back. She heard a sigh from behind her, you should watch your words, Momo. A girl with orange bright hair stood up and marched to the now completely baffled couple whose their daughter was clinging fearfully to her mother as she was softy whimpering while the older girl tried to calm her down. The orange-haired girl stood in front of the baby who shrunk into her mother smacking her with her rattle. The girl smiled saying, Hello, I'm Itsuka Kendo, and I'm sorry for my friend's words. She's homeschooled for most of her life, so she has never seen things like this before, and to be honest, never had I. But please don't take it the wrong way, she's really nice. Both nodded as they quietly made their way to their desks which were beside each other. The red-haired and silver-haired boys came up to them introducing themselves. Hey I'm Ajiro Kirishima, the silver-haired carried on, and I'm Tetsu 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 Tetsu. Both boys said in unison, it's nice to meet you. The two were then blindsided as something took their daughter. They quickly turned to see a pink-skinned girl with pink hair and black eyes bouncing their daughter who was giggling all the way. Ibarra then shyly asked, Can you give me back my daughter? She just ate and I don't want her to throw up on you. The girl looked at her as she held Fubuki. She smiled saying, I don't mind, she's so cute. Mina stood up happily jumping up and down. That's me and the little baby really likes me. She rubbed her chin before looking at Izuku. Izu babe, do you think that somewhere we have a cute looking baby like this? Maybe. It has green skin, green curly hair like you, green emerald looking eyes, and horns to go with it. The boy was blushing at the idea but nodded not to hurt the girl's feelings. Aizawa asked, how does this affect their grades or their performance overall? Discord rubs his chin. Well, regarding their grades, it's hard to say since study hard to let it not show up. But regarding their performance, for example sometimes they have to take their daughter with them on internships. The first year, they take their daughter with them the entire year. This, of course, pisses you off, but you can't say anything given that their reasoning is solid which is most of their babysitters bail on them. Izuku rubbed his head. How does that happen? How does an entire neighborhood's worth of babysitters bail on me and Ibarra? Discord only shrugs. The pink girl then introduced herself. I'm Mina Ashido. It's a pleasure to meet you. The girl handed Fubuki back to her mother as a frog-looking girl came up to them saying, I'm Tsuyu Asui, Ribbit. 
She titled her head to the side as she asked, Please forgive my bluntness, but how did you both have her? I mean you didn't just meet at a party and fooled around. She then noticed the silent expressions on their faces, You didn't, did you? Both Izuku and Ibarra were worried, but suddenly the vine-haired girl yelled without thinking, No, we're put into a quirk marriage. The girl slapped her hands on her mouth as she asked herself, What in the world did I say right? Izuku looked at her, before saying, What she meant was that our parents had us engaged from a young age, due to family relations. Everyone gave them a nod as silence was heavy in the room, but a certain scarred boy looked at Izuku, and then Ibarra and Fubuki, I swear I will save you both from him. No one will ever suffer what I did. Shoto cringed. Huh, I guess I now have Midoriya on my radars a little bit early, and for a small misunderstanding. He looked at the green-haired boy. I'm sorry for any harm that I may deal to you, Midoriya. I really am. This apology however didn't help make the boy feel any better. Izuku sighed wondering how will this affect people's look toward him. Some might shy away, others might feel like he's evil, and some might not care at all. This world was a huge mess for lack of a better term. Suddenly a voice rang out, you're all silent. That's good. It seems that you're all rational students. A man inside a sleeping bag wormed his way into the room. Once he entered it, he looked at Izuku and Ibarra who waved at him awkwardly. Well, at least some of you are. Both teens lowered their heads remembering how Aizawa told them at the entrance exam how irrational they were. The man then summoned a gym uniform for his sleeping bag. I'm Shota Aizawa, and I'm your homeroom teacher. He scratched his head. I know this is sudden, but take these and meet me at the training. We're going to have a small test of sorts. The students quickly began to filter out, but Aizawa stopped both parents, bailed on again. Both teens nodded. Problem children, you need to take a hint. If your babysitter bailed on you not just once, not just twice, not just thrice, not just four times, but five times, you need to know that she's a bad babysitter. Both teens nodded their heads as they walked away in shame as the nighttime hero shook his head. They're not problem children. They're disaster children. I just hope their offspring won't be a heckle like they are. He didn't know why, but he suddenly shuddered. Izuku frowned before saying, That's really mean Aizawa sensei. You can't alleviate me from problem child to disaster child all of a sudden. The man snorts at him, if you have a baby, and throw your money on a lousy babysitter, I do. Ibarra frowns, but it is shown that God helped us to be wonderful parents to Fubuki. She's healthy and happy. I say we're blessed children for being able to keep her well fed. Most of us would have ditched her at the nearest orphanage. She began to pray. I hope that the Lord blesses those versions of ourselves strength to be great parents and help Fubuki to be a wonderful girl. Aizawa shook his head at the girl as he returned to the screen. In the boys' locker room, Izuku was changing out of his clothes as Kirishima approached him. Madabro, you really manly. It's really manly of you to take care of your daughter and bring her here with you. He said with Tetsu vocalizing his support for the red-haired boy's words. Midoriya only nodded not having the heart to tell them that the babysitter bailed on them and that he and Ibarra were planning to keep their little ray of sunshine a secret for the longest time possible. He looked to the others looking to see what his other classmates looked like. There was one with balls for hair who was glaring at him, a guy with two different hair colors, a mantis looking boy, the boy from the entrance exam who he sent flying, Shishida, a boy with multiple arms, a rock-headed boy, a boy with blonde hair with a lightning symbol on it, Kakin, the manly twins, something then threw everything out of the window causing it to stop as he felt rage fill him. Everyone tilted their heads wondering what would make Izuku of all people angry. Izuku saw that the ball-haired kid was drooling as looked at a hole in the wall. The boy yelled happily, I can't believe it, it's a gift from the upperclassmen for us to use. The boy went to look through it only to be met by hand. He looked up to see a dark-faced Izuku who was smiling eerily at him. The boy cracked his neck. He grabbed the grape-haired boy and walked outside the room. Everyone could have sworn that the noises emitted from the outside weren't human at all. Two minutes later, Izuku came back carrying knocked out Minta. The boy then happily asked, can someone please plug that wall? He walked outside with both Tetsu and Kirishima running behind him telling him that he was manly. All of the girls glared at Minta as Momo held a hand to her mouth in disgust. I can't believe Minta. You'd even perv on a little girl. How can you live with yourself is something that is beyond me. The boy's eyes went wide as he defended himself. What? I would never do that. Suyu remembered something. As her face turned white, didn't you tell Ri-chan when we first met her that you can't wait to see her in ten years? This caused shivers to run through Izuku's, Itsuka's, and Ibarra's spines as they held a retiter. Aizawa unamused by hearing about this comment said, We'll talk about this later, Minta. The boy shivered as he nodded his head knowing that there was no getting out of this one as he saw the girls on the side cheer Izuku for stopping that version of himself. The boy bitterly thought, Midoriya, you lucky bastard. First, it's your Raka. Then Kendo, you're engaged, then it's a hot Todoroki version, and now this. What happened to the bro code? The scene then progresses to the other side of the wall as a girl with earphone jacks says, The pervert has been taken care of. 
I think the green-haired one gave him the beating of a lifetime. She looked at Ibarra saying, Hey, Vinehead, you got one lucky guy. Wish I can meet someone like him someday. The girl blushed as she registered what she said making the others giggle at her. Ibarra smiled at her as she held her daughter with her vines while buttoning up her gym uniform. I quite agree. Most people might have run away when told that they were about to become a dad. But Izuku didn't and I'm lucky for that matter. She looked at her girl who tapped her nose with her hand making the girl smile. I just hope my daughter won't be forced to go through the same things I went through and have a better life altogether. She held her baby as she walked out. Suyu then croaked. Well, that was quite ominous because I'm sure she's not talking about her daughter or being a teenage mom. The other girls nodded as Kendo smiled saying. Well, in that case, let's just help her. We're going to be heroes aren't we? So we need to bring people's spirits up and this will be good training. The other girls nodded as they followed the orange-haired girl outside the changing room unaware of the torture that they were about to experience. All 1B girls shivered as they remembered Aizawa's test from the first world as Kanoko spoke. What will I do? My shrooms can't make me faster. I have to pass using my body's strength. The best I can do is use my shrooms as springs to help me with the repeated side steps. But that doesn't mean I'm hopeless. The test is biased, designed for people with flashy quirks. You'd think someone who doesn't have one would make a more logical test. But, Aizawa bit his lip as he heard the girl's rant. In hindsight, she was right. For all the times he raved about rationality, his test sure isn't. But at the same time it was designed to see how creative someone can be with their quirks. But at the same time those who are quirks won't help them at all. Had he expelled students who were like him? People with quirks couldn't do anything to help them with physical exercises. Nezu smiled as he sipped tea. Have second thoughts about your method. Aizawa. The teacher says nothing as he just looks forward. It's been two weeks since the beginning of the UA. And for the heroic parents in training it was anything but tiring. Their babysitter. And a new one to be exact. Has bailed on them. But at least she had an excuse. Her family was attacked by a villain. So Izuku and Ibarra had to take their daughter with them to the USJ. Izuku patted his girlfriend's back saying. Well, at least we'll have three teachers around us to take care of our little angel, he said while running his hand through his daughter's hair. Plus, you know we're going to rescue training, something that you like. The girl smiled at him, as she added, and what's the worst that can happen? Both teens boarded the bus as they went to their training unaware of the danger waiting for them. Both teens stood up with their faces as pale as a ghost as Ibarra turned looking at him and saying, Please for the love of God, tell me that the little angel won't witness the fight at the USJ. Discord sucked his cheeks. Well, let's talk about it. The sixth universe Izuku jumped from his place and grabbed Discord by the scruff of his shirt as he yelled with a panicked expression, Please, tell me that my daughter of that world wasn't exposed to the horror of the USJ. Izuku was sweating bullets. He still had nightmares about the USJ, so how will it be for a small baby? They'll be lucky if she wasn't traumatized for life. From down on the ground, Ibarra was praying that the answer was a negative hoping with all of her soul that her daughter of that world wasn't put in any dangerous situation. Discord snapped his finger and sent Izuku back to where he was sitting. The chaos being bit his lip. Sorry, but your daughter was in the USJ and was a first-hand witness to having her father thrashed around by the Namo. Izuku's and Ibarra's expressions fell as they heard that. But if it helps a little, she became the world's first early bloomer. Both teens tilted their heads as curiosity took over their sadness. Your daughter was so afraid for her father that her quirk which is flame vines unleashed itself in a strong display ripping the Namu into bits and pieces so much so that it couldn't regenerate again. It took Aizawa using his quirk to shut off her quirk. And yes, I know Ibarra's quirk is a mutation, but Aizawa's quirk can still shut it off since it has some emitter characteristics. Both teens didn't know how to feel now. Aizawa sighed. I bet that version of myself upgraded them from disaster children to apocalypse children. No, wait, Apocalypse family given that their daughter is an early bloomer. Discord laughed. You don't even know that half of it. The man kept smashing his head into the wall after that happened as he asked himself why he had to have two problem children in his class and Vlad didn't have to. In the end, Recovery Girl whacked him unconscious with her cane, so he wouldn't damage himself further than what the Namo. He then crossed his arms. Any questions? He was shocked when Shigaraki raised his hand, so he nodded his head. The Decay user asked, How was my reaction to this? Discord scratched his head. Well, you were quite pissed off, but at least you had some self-control not to attack a seven-month-old baby. That and her quirk was leashing randomly. And you were kinda sure that she will kill at least a couple of students, but it didn't happen so you retreated when All Might showed up since you can't do anything at this point except yell in anger. The Decay user nodded his head seemingly accepting the answer. All of his comrades were shocked. They thought that he was going to throw a tantrum on behalf of that version of himself. Takage then asked, What is Zuku's relation with Ibarra in that world? Are they just boyfriend and girlfriend till their daughter grows older and then they break up on mutual terms? Or are they steady? This interested both green-haired teens as they perked up. Discord raised a thumbs up to her question. 
Well for all intents and purposes, they are technically married. They spent an entire year together and got used to each other having their own couple quarrels and much more. But after a while, they couldn't just imagine being with someone else. For example, one time when the dorm started Itsuka came down and saw them talking about baby names for their future children. Let's just say, her face was so red you could have mistaken it for a stop sign. Even though the topic wasn't really something to be embarrassed about. He then saw Todoroki raise his arms, so he ushered him to speak. What did I say to him during the sports festival given my... Um, the boy hesitated before saying, misconception. Discord laughed at the boy's words as he said, misconception is an understatement. You told the same usual talk about your dad, and how you're planning to be a hero, but you made the mistake of adding the threat that you're going to take Ibarra and Fubuki freeing them from him. Discord bit his lip as the vine girl raised an eyebrow at the notion of being free in that world from someone she clearly loves. Dot 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 yeah. He didn't take too kindly to that as he grabbed you by the neck rising in the air, and told you that if you want to continue living that'll you'll never look at his wife or daughter ever again before the wall beside your head had a punch hole left in it, and you had a follow-up talk with Bakugo telling you to never look their way or he'll kill, consequences be damned. The boy chuckled awkwardly at the number of threats he received from his misunderstanding. Discord smiled. Alright, now since this was taken out of the way, let's hear what Minimi has to say about this world before we jump to another one. Izuku scratched his head as he looked to the side seeing Yuri beginning to snooze on Ibarra's lap as the vine girl covered her with her hair to keep her warm. This one is mostly embarrassing. I think I like the Todoroki one better, I mean just the concept of having a child at this age, and the way it happened just seems wrong, and my actions after that seem more so. But it is also interesting given the new challenges that will rise regarding both Ibarra and I being parents and hero students but it seems to go smoothly given from what I saw Ibarra is a good mother, I just hope I am a good father like she is. The vine girl allowed a small smile to grace her face with her blush returning to her. Discord then snapped his finger, new world coming right up. The scenes changed till it finally landed on a title, The Test. Discord cringed as he said, Well, good thing he's sleeping because this one is not for the weak-hearted. Everyone tilted their heads as the villains thought that this one was a villain world so AFO said, Is it a villain world? Discord waved his hand saying, 50 minus 50, it depends on how you see the villain here. The villains were intrigued while the heroes didn't like the idea of seeing a villain version of their students. The scene began with an old inhabited school. It seemed that it wasn't used for years even though it was only abandoned for two years now. It was the disgraced junior high of Aldria. Bakugo looked at Izuku. Hey Deku, isn't that our junior high? The boy nodded as Bakugo said, Man, it brings back so many fond memories. Remember the good times we had there, Deku? The green-haired boy discreetly flipped him off shocking Ibarra and Itsuka, but they knew he had a reason. The school was shut down after one of its students allegedly committed suicide by jumping off its roof. An investigation was carried out, and the word corrupt wasn't enough to describe the place. Akigo choked on a drink as his eyes shot wide, and swallowed heavily as he said quietly, That version of the nerd actually took my words seriously and killed himself. No one heard him except Jairo who almost cried knowing at one point Izuku was suicide baited. I don't really think this is a good idea, Shroom, Kanoko said in a worried voice still not getting how she was roped into this. She was terrified about the urban legend regarding the spirit of the student who killed himself. She wished she stayed with Ibarra to listen to her religious mumbo-jumbo. It was better than playing with angry spirits. I really think we should head back, Satsuna said. I'm all for adventures, but disrespecting the final resting place or memorial of someone isn't cool. She mostly came because she didn't want to be with the guys since they were being morons as they had a card night which meant a lot of shouting and swearing, and sadly no sleep for her. It was not like this was any better. I swear I'm gonna wrangle Shihai's neck when we go back for putting us in this situation. Itsuka, the future symbol of peace said. It was already known that she was considered the second coming of All Might after her victory against Shigaraki in the Jaku hospital attack. Izuku chuckled as he ignored the concerned looks he was receiving. Another world where Kendo is All Might's successor. He looked at Discord who answered quickly, You, Mirio, Achako, Momo, Itsuka, Kayoka, Suyu, Mizo, Denki, and finally Bakugo are the people who have the highest chance of having All Might's quirk in order. Everyone nodded as the mentioned people felt honored to have such grace on them. And somehow, someway Maito. This made everyone shocked. Kanoko asked, Why are we here, and what's the Jaku hospital attack? Discord replied, You'll find out. And the attack was a raid from the heroes to stop Shigaraki from becoming AFO2. Zero. But you guys failed spectacularly with many casualties on your side. And Endeavor had all of his dirty laundry aired from the entire world to see. Everyone cringed. But AFO smiled knowing that his plan succeeded wondering if he managed to take control of Tamura's body like he planned. Kodai hummed agreeing with Itsuka. The black-skinned boy told Yanagi that for someone who talked a lot about ghosts, she was cowardly when it came to them. The girl refused the claim. 
but the boy challenged her to go and tumble over the desk of the spirit of Aldria Junior High. The urban legend was if you entered the school, the spirit will force you through a test against something you're insecure about, but if you fail, he will take your body to have a second chance in life. She accepted shocking the boy and angering Ibarra who refused to do such a thing. The silver-haired girl looked at her friends, come on, guys, our journey is at its last station. It was a simple endeavor. Itsuka facepalmed hearing her classmates talking about destroying a shrine made for someone who killed himself as if she was talking about drinking water. The girls entered the school as they made their way to the third floor and entered a room. The girls stayed in front of the door as Satsuna spoke with fear in her voice. Ghosty for the love of all that's hot, let's go back. This place is giving me a bad sensation along my spine. It's like the walls have eyes. The others nodded in fear. Even Itsuka was shivering as she felt a presence that made Shigaraki look weak. Her danger sense wasn't shutting off. The ghost girl ignored them as she walked to a desk in the middle of the room. The other desks were either destroyed or shattered. She looked at the desk which had a portrait of a green-haired boy and some flowers beside it. The girl simply used her quirk and tossed it to the side of the room shattering it into bits and pieces. She looked at her friends as she put her hands on her hips saying, Now, can you all stop being so scared? Her friends now all seemed petrified as they pointed at something behind her. She looked only to see a shadow forming. Everyone was mortified that the student who killed himself was Izuku. All Might grasped his head wondering if his words were the reason that drove the boy over the edge of that world. Izuku meanwhile was unperturbed as Itsuka asked him, Izuku, did you ever, I don't know, think about ending your life? She crossed her fingers hoping the answer is no. The boy kept quiet for a while. I can't lie and say that I hadn't thought about it at once or twice, but that's in the past now, so let's focus on this instead of dwelling on what ifs. The girls all felt their hearts get stabbed as the boy they cared for at one point thought about killing himself. Jaira looked at Bakugo with a hateful look. Izuku, please for the love of the Lord, don't brush something so serious off. Ibarra exclaimed, but then asked, do you still think about that? If you do, please don't lie to us, we're all here for you. The boy replied, I wouldn't say think, more like dream. I always have nightmares about my friends turning on me like in junior high and telling me to kill myself. At the end of it, I find myself in front of the edge of the roof before I jump. The vine girl hugged him saying, I will never turn on you, Izuku. Itsuka hugged him from the other side. Me too, Izuku. The boy blushed from the contact but thanked them. Aizawa made notes to send him to Hound Dog once this was over if he still remembered that. Discord said, Alright, let's get back on track. You eventually get the honor of actually seeing him do it, so don't worry about it too much. All the students dreaded the idea but nodded. Ryaiko took a step back as the shadow began to take form. When it finished, the girl's eyes widened in evident fear as she forgot the number one rule of being in a haunted house. Always have a religious person with you. The figure was the same boy in the picture. He looked at the remains of his desk as he chuckled. Pretty gusty tonight, aren't we? The spirit of Izuku smiled menacingly at them. As it said, most people who come here mostly come for me to scare the shit out of them, not kill them. I even had the honor of scaring muscular. The mention of name sent shivers down Kendo's spine remembering her fight with him. But at the end, I sent him screaming for his mom like a pansy. He smiled at Riaiko. But you, you're either the dumbest person I saw or the bravest one. Either way, you know what happens now. He said as chains erupted from the floor wrapping around the girl's necks. He smirked with a demonic grin, let the tests begin, and darkness enveloped the area. Everyone now was creeped out as Satsuna asked. It said that if the person fails his test, then he takes his body. What happens if more than one fails? Discord shrugged. Most likely he'll take the one he wants the most. Ryaiko looked at Izuku. Izuku, I'm terribly sorry for what that version of myself did to you. No way or form is it acceptable to do that to someone's memorial. The boy told her not to worry about it. Itsuka woke up to a horrifying sight. All the users of OFA were struggling against something. They looked at her as the second barked. What in the world did you do? She couldn't answer as chains dragged them away. Be gone, pathetic echoes of failure. The girl fearfully looked at the specter. Please, I know what we did was wrong, but can you let us go? No, but my name is Izuku Midoriya if you like to know. The girl didn't know why, but she thought she knew that name from somewhere. The successor of All Might. The new symbol of peace. I have to say that's quite the legacy you're going to carry. The girl felt flattered for a moment. Too bad it's placed on the shoulders of someone pathetic and useless as you are. This caused the wind to be knocked from the girl's sails as she registered the words. Her shocked expression made the specter laugh. What did you think that I'm going to praise you? I don't praise people who can't make something of themselves and need powers from an outside source to reach others. You're just as sad and hopeless as I expected. The girl continued to shrink on herself. She didn't know why, but he was terrifying. I'm not pathetic. I'm going to be everyone's hero. Itsuka yelled back trying to strengthen herself. You, a hero. 
Sure, you are. But just for muscle-bounded quirked morons in other words you're a symbol to those who have power and you'll never be a hero to people like me. Those who are born with power will never understand our struggles. The girl was confused now. But let's talk about how you lunged on the first opportunity to replace your quirk with all mites. Big fist. What a stupid quirk. What were you planning to accomplish with that? Everyone was shocked at how Izuku was attacking Kendo even the boy himself seemed mortified at the way he was talking to the girl. He looked at Kendo and said, I'm so sorry, Itsuka. I don't know why he's saying that. I don't mean any of it. He was silenced by a hug as Kendo said, I know so don't blame yourself Izuku, but I'm interested in how I'll be able to beat this. Discord said, in due time, you will see which is about a few seconds. Wrong, Kendo shouted back. All Might choose me because he believes in me and I didn't replace my quirk. You can scare me all you want, but I will save my friends. He then asked a question, you mean like you saved Tenko? The girl's eyes widened as she remembered Tamura dying at her hands after promising to save him to Nana. Admit it you're nothing but a failure who needed another to make up for her weakness. The girl began to cry as she was bombarded with memories of her past, bullying, and her failures. She shook her head as she tried to forget Tamura's death from her mind, but suddenly a high-pitched voice said, Shut up, she tried her best. Both looked and Izuku sneered, Where did you brat come from? Go back to bed. Itsuka saw Tenko in front of her. She tried her best to save me, but I was too stubborn. He then looked at the girl and said, Don't give Itsuka. You're a hero beat him. Break his chains. Be yourself. He's only strong when you let him be. The girl then stood up steadying herself as she put a hand around the chain around her neck and began to yank it free. You will never control me ever again. I'm Itsuka Kendo the battle hero, battle fist, and I will be freed. I'm me and I don't care what you say about me, so be gone. The chain was then broken as Izuku was blasted away. But Kendo fell to the ground the last thing she heard from Tenko was, don't hate him. He's just hurt like me. Kendo hummed, Shigaraki of all people came to my rescue. I don't know if I feel flattered or insulted. While at least it's a cute baby version of him, it would have been wrong if Krusty himself came over to save me. She looked at him as he flipped her off, but she flipped him back as she asked, and what did he mean when he said he's just hurt like me? Shigaraki answered, in that world, the golden boy was abandoned by everyone. He was left alone. No one wanted him at worst, or no one supported him at best. He's died angry at this world. This is his way of leashing out by scaring any idiot who enters his domain. Vitoria may be the villain in the eyes of those girls, but in his eyes, everyone with a quirk is a villain. Everyone was shocked by his explanation as Izuku said, No one's born a villain, but villains are made from people's actions and inactions. Satsuna Takage was a lot of things right now, but most importantly of all, she was petrified beyond belief. She heard about the urban legend, but she mostly scoffed it off as bullshit, people talking ill about some poor sap who was tired of life so much that he ended his life. She stood up from her crouched position as she prayed. Yes prayed that she'll be set free. She was seriously going to give Shihai a piece of her mind when they came back. If she came back, she looked at the chain tied around her neck and gulped. She seriously should have listened to Ibarra. She was an expert in religion and spirits. Ghosty was an expert in horror movies. Satsuna chuckled awkwardly. I guess this now means that I'm going to be the one put on the test. I wonder what my insecurity will be for him to attack me with. But I doubt it will be anything I can't fight off. Izuku looked at her and gave her a thumbs up. I'm sure that you're going to do fine. I mean you are one of the best students in the hero course. The girl felt her cheeks heat up. Boo. The girl heard a whisper behind causing her to jump back screaming like a little girl. Itsuka laughed. Well that's a solid start. Satsuna merely flipped her off saying. Yours wasn't better for me. You also cried like a little girl. If I need to remind you. Itsuka at least had the decency to blush as Ibarra and Izuku chuckled beside causing her to punch them in the shoulder. The girl whirled her body around as she came face to face with Izuku. Wow, I have to say you're cute for a ghost. The boy replied, thanks, but flattery will get you nowhere here. You're in my domain, and I'm got here. The girl gulped as she knew she had to play tough. She snapped her fingers as she sat down. Come at me with the toughest thing you have. Nothing can faze me. The boy grinned and it took all she had not to cry for the look he carried. It was like he knew something that she didn't, and this didn't vote well with her. I presume you would say something like that a mess? Failure. The girl jumped up as she yelled. I'll have you know that I'm at the peak of my life, and it can't be said that it is a failure. Yeah, sure. The boy snapped his fingers as he projected some of her memories. Why can't you be like your older siblings? They always better grades and have a better attitude than you. Why do you always have to be so disappointed? An older version of Takage was reprimanding her daughter as she held a test that held the mark B+, but I did my best on the exam, and I got the highest grade. The little Satsuna said, and it's not my fault that she began the fight. I had to defend myself from her. The older woman frowned, and always talking back to me. Honestly, you're such a failure compared to the others. Go to your room and study harder young lady. 
She then gave Satsuna her test as the girl slowly made her way to her room as she softly sniffled. Oh, so I guess I have a strict mother here. Most looked at her as she said, my mom is really chill. Most of the time, we spend time preparing dates for each other. Everyone looked at the screen and continued to watch. What a weakling, am I right? He said as he appeared beside Satsuna who had tears pooling up in her eyes, but used her willpower. Always been a failure from a young age till now. It must be really hard to live up to the expectations with all your weakness especially given how weak you are and how lame your quirk is. Hell, you couldn't even save your mentor. Another memory popped up as Satsuna remembered it from after the joint exercise. She sat inside her room crying as she remembered her defeat at the hand of Bakugo and Majestic's death. It was so fast. I barely saw anything. I'm so sorry. I failed, Majestic. Playing hero while everyone is stronger than you. Why bother when you're nothing but a failure? At this point, the girl was curled up in a fetal position as she cried silently not wanting to appear weak. Admit it, you're pathetic. He kept attacking her with memories of her mother scolding her, but when she was about to give up, something popped into her head. It was something her father told her, be proud of who you are. She stood up shakily as she said, I don't care if I'm a failure. I'm me and that's final, so go away. She said yanking the chain and throwing it to the side as Izuku disappeared. She then fell into unconsciousness I won, but it was a close one, but I still won. The girl cheered as she asked, I wonder who's he going after now. She looked at Kanoko and Yui feeling that Riaiko was toward the end. Something then popped into her head, hey, I never saw Pony show up. Discord answered, she's in Wana in this world while Shinso managed to wiggle his way albeit barely into 1B by saving Yuraka from the zero pointer in this world. The brainwashing boy cheered. Kanoko looked around in fear. She should have really stayed to hear Ibarra's stuff, but no she had to come to see Riaiko desecrate someone's memorial. No wonder he was pissed off. She sure will be. A clanking noise behind her caused her to jump up as she yelled, Who's there? Kanoko gulped. It's my turn to experience this horror. I hope I come out in one piece. And before Satsuna can even joke about it a glare forms the mushroom girl shut her up. I don't think being scared half to death is something to be laughed about, said. The green-haired girl chuckled while rubbing the back of her head. I just wanted to lighten the mood a little given how tense it seems not that I can blame anyone here. It's just so creepy. She looked up and saw Izuku hanging by a noose from the ceiling. She cried out in fear, but the corpse suddenly said, Why are you screaming, weirdo? Or should I say disgusting? The girl was taken aback when she heard those words. It's been a while since the last time she heard them, but she shook her head. They mean nothing. She was going to be the pro hero, Shemage, and she wasn't about to allow some phantom to stop her, so she steeled herself, do your worst. Izuku grinned at her with all his teeth visible. But of course, Miss Pro Hero, I have to do my worst to live up to my reputation, but do tell me one thing. Are you sure you're a pro because you don't seem like one to me? Kanoko's resolve fell slightly as she asked. What do you mean? Of course, I'm a pro hero. I'm going to graduate the coming year, and I'm going. She was cut off, dot 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 to be the next you and buy in line to take the money and keep taking to shove it in her pockets. You know people like you disgust me. You have no reason to live other than money. I really wish I could just kill you, but I am a man of my word, so if you pass you may live. The girl shrunk on herself. Those words she heard recently from a lot of people calling her greedy. Only thinking about herself, but she yelled, I'm not greedy. I'm doing it. For what? The people. He then laughed loudly. People like you always begin the same for the people, and then you start hoarding money for your pockets. He grabbed the girl by the face, look me in the eyes and tell me I'm wrong. This doesn't look too shroomy for me. I'm about to fold in and be defeated, Kanoko said in worry for her alternate self as she hoped for a line of hope to appear. The girl cried as she was too afraid to think or act not such a cruel gaze and the amount of malice she was receiving. But she remembered her classmates who always praised her for her goals and her desire to help others. She looked at him as she remembered her boyfriend's Shihai when he told her that she was one of the most generous people he ever met. She was so going to bet his butt once she's back. You're wrong. Now shroom off me and leave me alone. Izuku was then pushed off her as he said in an angry voice. Damn it, this can't keep happening to me. I will win against you all. She then saw the specter vanish into the darkness. She quickly grabbed her chain and ripped it off throwing it into the ground as she said, Shihai, I hope you're ready for the beatdown of the century when we come back because of your great idea. She then passed out. Kanoko wiped the sweat that formed on her forehead on her version's behalf as she clutched her heart saying, That was too much for my heart to handle. I honestly thought that he was going to beat me and take my body for himself. She then looked at the resident emo kid of 1B rising a thumbs up, Thanks for the kind words, Kirwara. The boy frowned as he knew that the girl he longed for didn't like him back, but nodded anyway. Satsuna then said, Okay, so that's Itsuka, me, and Kanoko. So that leaves just Yui and Riaiko. I mean Yui's is quite obvious. I mean both courses know at this point that she's a little bit shy. A lot of boys of 1B in their heads said, more like seriously perverted, but keeps it for herself. 
Izuku said, I just hope that you all make it out safe. Yui took deep breaths to ward off the suffocating feeling of death that came with the place. It was like the entire building was a trap to suck out life from your body. When Ryaiko originally told her what she was doing, she was against it, but she didn't speak against it since she knew that at the end of the day, the local legend is just that, a local legend. But now seeing the specter in all of its glory changed her mind she wanted out and quickly. A thud behind her alerted her to the presence of the one person she didn't want to see. The specter stood there with an ear-to-ear -ear grin like a demon ready to hunt down its prey as he said, Well, silent beauty, ready to give up your body. I promise I'll take good care of it. Yui frowned. It would appear that Ryaiko is saved, for last, and now it's my turn to suffer. I worried that he might succeed in ending me, or else I'm not sure I'm ready to die. Meanwhile, everyone in 1B was shocked as they watched Yui in that world run away in fear with a scared look that showed so much emotion. It was a rare sight to behold to see the Ice Queen of 1B to have her give out such a face. Yui looked at the shocked looks. What? It doesn't mean that I'm good at controlling my emotions that I'm emotionless. The girl frowned as she crossed. Her arms as Izuku said, I think you're great Kodai. The girl blushed lightly as she thanked him. Yui was now running in the endless darkness till something snagged her leg. It was a hand. And she perfectly knew who it belonged to. Where are you going, emotionless monster? The girl shuddered at the words, the tone, and the name. It was one given to her by her sister when they saw their mom fall down the stairs. While her sister cried, she was stone-faced. This didn't sit well with her sister who began to call her that. Or should I call you? The bringer of death and destruction since every time that mouth. The viewers open someone gets hurt. The girl shook her head in silence as the specter hit her with a memory of a training exercise with her partner at the time Kaibara. She tried to engage in small talk with him, but she distracted him causing him to break his leg. The girl continued to shake her head refusing to listen as she said in a harsh voice, Shut up. You don't know anything about me or my friends. Leave me alone now. Izuku was shocked when he was blasted away as he was not expecting the girl to be freed this quickly. Everyone looked at Yui as she said, I don't take shit from anybody. And it would take more than a few words to startle me. Ryaiko gulped as she knew that now was her turn to suffer. It would appear that the rail of misfortune it has finally reached me. I hope that fate doesn't make me a victim at the end of the road of uncertainty. Izuku looked at her. I hope you pass that test too, Yanagi. I don't want any harm to come to you. Ryaiko has done a lot of stupid stuff in her life. Her mother can testify to that. From the time she thought the neighbor's house was haunted so she brought a ghost detecting kit and entered it at night at the age of eight which thankfully elicited a few laughs to the time she unintentionally summoned a demon into the dorms who is still lurking somewhere. She made sure to burn the Ouija board after that and for Ibarra never to find out. No was Ryaiko's reply to Ibarra's unasked question, I didn't summon a demon. It's just your imagination and Kaminari's appetite. I once saw him sneak into our dorms and eat your leftovers. The mentioned boy cried out, hey don't sell me out like that. Ryaiko shrugged. Ryaiko looked in front of her as she gulped. The specter was standing there. Well, if it isn't the idiot who caused this in the first place, tell Creepy what you have to say for yourself. Makes you feel tough that you knocked down something that can't defend itself. The girl gulped, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to. I was just doing. A bet. The ghost hummed, I suppose so. I mean someone as creepy as you are won't be able to make friends unless they lick people's boots to prove to them that they're cool. The girl was taken aback by the word as she defended herself, I'm not creepy. Then why did your friends in elementary and middle school leave you? Izuku asked with a smirk as a single tear left Ryaiko's eye. She remembered how everyone used to leave her once they learned about her unusual interests. I have friends now. They care about me. She said in a loud voice, but Izuku smiled as he said, Really you sure I mean after this will they be your friends? The girl shrank down, risking their life for absolutely nothing. Ryaiko yelled, I don't care I trust my friends, and they won't abandon me over something like this. I know them more than you do so fuck off. Ryaiko smiled, she did it. She defeated the ghost at its own game, but once she opened her eyes she paled as a single whisper entered her ear. Ryaiko was confused. It was clear that she passed the test the ghost has set, but why was she worried? Could be there more to the test than meets the eye Ryaiko wondered Izuku scratched the top of his head. I don't know, but I have a bad feeling about this. I just hope that this doesn't end badly. He knew deep down that something bad was about to happen. It was now morning as birds were chirping into the old junior high. The girls were all sprawled against the ground sleeping peacefully. Itsuka woke up and said, Guys, are you alright? Everyone woke from their sleep checking themselves as they all practically ran outside the building as Kendo said, Let's never do this again. Kanoko nodded. I barely shroomed my way out of his test. I thought I was a goner. Yui nodded with her as Satsuna added. Yeah, he's super messed up. He hit with some serious shit. I almost lost it. Kendo too was afraid. The only one who didn't say anything was Ryako who was looking back at the building with fear. But the orange-haired girl could have sworn that she saw a smirk for a brief moment. But she shook her head. 
Come on, let's go to the dorms. The girls all began to leave, but Ryako took one last look at the building for a brief moment her eyes became emerald green before returning to normal as she walked away with a shit-eating grin that didn't belong to her face under normal circumstances. Mina then said in shock, You gotta be fucking kidding me. Did Izzy babe of that world take over Ryako's body, but how she passed his test? Everyone was also flabbergasted by this. Back in the school, the spirit of Riaiko stood with a chain preventing her from leaving as she remembered the specter's last words before he yanked her soul from her body. It's a lie. What? Everyone from the hero course asked confused. But only AFO knew so he began laughing loudly as Izuku frowned also understanding what the entity meant at the end of this world. He didn't like it. Discord said, Alright, what is your impression of this one? The seventh world everyone was still dumbfounded and very confused that Riaiko still had her body possessed even though she passed the test set in front of her. Well at least everyone. The only person who knew what happened was Fo who was still laughing like a manic till he took a deep breath. Discord. Shall I explain the obvious to these imbeciles? The chaos master nodded. Well to put it in terms so that you can understand, the legend is wrong. The test is just something he came up with to toy with people. He simply just loves their fear. It makes him feel powerful. And the little moments of victory are nothing more than him allowing them to go when he was bored. So every time one of those girls managed to find their inner strength, the villain gestured with his fingers, was nothing more than the boy growing bored with them. In fact, the only one who shocked him was the orange-haired one when young Tamura came out of nowhere and managed to help her win. Everyone was flabbergasted by the revelation. But Momo raised her hand. Does anyone ever find out that there is something wrong with Riaiko? I mean surely her friends will notice that something is wrong when she begins to behave strangely. Discord nodded his head. True, Ibarra was the first to find out that something is wrong when she heard Riaiko talking to herself about getting used to a girl's body. At first, she dismissed it as Riaiko watching a horror movie and getting too much into it. But then one day she witnessed a very quick shift in the color of Riaiko's eye from her normal grey to green, and then back to grey. That's when she knew that something about her friend was off and set out to find what happened. And of course, she discovered a lot of things she wished she didn't courtesy of Bakugo. Gyro jumped up inquiring. How the heck did that monster make it into Yua after he was the one who suicide baited Izuku in the first place? I find it hard to believe that Yua let him in. Discord looked at her as she sat down so he asked, How did you find out about that? I never told anyone that in my world and the previous one never mentioned that, nor did this Izuku. The girl pouted. I heard Bakugo wondering if the nerd actually took his advice in that world and jumped off the roof like he told him. All the eyes were now set on Bakugo who wanted nothing more than to disappear into thin air as Kirishima grabbed his shoulder. Baku bro, you didn't say that right. You're manly. The red-haired boy asked more for himself than anything. The ashen blonde looked away at what can be called shame as he said. Yeah, I did tell him to take a swan dive off the roof if he wanted to become a hero so badly. But I didn't mean it. Everyone was taken aback as they felt a spike in energy envelope them. They looked at Discord who was cracking his neck. Okay, I know this looks bad, but let's move past it, because there's nothing we can do right now to change the past, and the best we can hope is to find a better future. He finished as he saw murderous energy all directed toward Bakugo as he answered Kayuka's initial question. A racer had decided to give him a chance. You see after the investigation a lot of people were taken to detention centers and juvenile jails, one of them Bakugo. He kept insisting that he wants to meet a teacher in Yue, till they finally arranged for a racer head to meet him. Bakugo expressed deep guilt in what happened and practically begged the man to give him a chance to prove that he can be a hero, which Izuku would be proud of. The racer head saw that Bakugo has potential if he was willing to accept his mistakes and gave him a chance, but he was on parole. Ibarra then asked, What were the things I found that were so disturbing? Discord replied, Good question. You found the truth about Izuku Midoriya's quirk state. You see in that world Izuku was labeled to everyone as someone with a minor analysis quirk, or that were the official records that the HPSC released. All Might asked, why did they fake the records? What were they going to gain from changing his status from quirkless to an analysis quirk user? Discord smiled, their independence. You see unlike in your world where the government is kinda sleepy toward the HPSC behavior, and that one it was awake, and Lady Nagant's scandal rang red alarms, and the officials had to race to tell them that the woman went crazy, and they were given a warning any more failures and they lose their independence. And given that the HPSC was in control of Aldria Junior High, and turned out that in this school there was an MLA recruitment site, it was a lot of trouble. And with Izuku being quirkless, it showed failure on their end for promoting equality for everyone so they faked it as much as they can to save their skin. All Might was gaping as the rest of the audience till a feminine voice spoke, Don't feel so shocked symbol of peace, those bastards will do anything to cling to power. The blonde turned and saw a female with purple hair and quickly knew who she was, Lady Nagant. The woman chuckled, You know me, I'm shocked. Everyone looked at her as she said, I'm up to speed with everything going. 
She then turned toward Izuku saying, Nice hurry you got there, is there room for one more? The woman teased the boy who almost fainted from embarrassment. Ryaiko then asked, Did I manage to receive my body back? The chaos user smirked, not telling, though we might find out later on. Everyone tilted their heads, so he elaborated. There is a chance that some of the worlds we came across will come back as well as different variations of them so don't be too shocked. He looked at Izuku. Minimi, any words before we jump to something else? Izuku frowned. I didn't like this world, since it showed how close I was to becoming another Shigaraki. Someone who was consumed by anger that it ate him even in death causing him to never find rest. I really hope that this never pops up again. Itsuka and Ibarra hugged the boy sensing the discomfort coming off him as Shigaraki frowned at the boy's last words. As much as I wish to deny it, both Shigaraki and I have one thing in common. We're both angry at this world for its treatment against us. The only difference while I use it to build a better one, he uses it to destroy everything. Before Shigaraki can reply, Discord said, Alright boys and girls, let's go back to world viewing and leave the debates for some time later. The world changed once more till it landed on one world that simply said, Trust is as fragile as glass so you croaked. I have a really bad feeling about this one, Ribbit. She looked at the chaos user who was biting his lip. Yep, this is definitely not a happy one. Discord rubbed the back of his head as he said, Wow, two bummer worlds in a row. That seems kinda depressing. Good thing Uri is sleeping or else she would have nightmares for weeks. I'm sure you people will have plenty of them when this world is over. Everyone gulped at this. At the hero's side gulped while the villain's side remained as cool as a cucumber. Well, here goes nothing. Discord said, I just hope you're ready for it because it ain't nice. It was raining heavily in Musatufa City. The forest area near the park was something that resembled a war zone that had witnessed countless battles. Trees were slashed, burned, frozen, blasted, uprooted, and many more. The area was also surrounded by heroes as they circled someone obscured from the view of the press. Said person was being escorted after being defeated by the U.S. students and some heroes to an HPSC van to be taken to interrogation at their headquarters. The person was none other than the U.A. traitor that the HSPC managed to find with the help of Pro Hero Eraser. Lady Nagant frowned. I pity the poor soul who managed to fall under their radars. I know for a fact that whoever this is, he isn't the U.A. traitor and is just being accused falsely. Izuku just sighed. Of course, I'm being accused of being the traitor because why not? I mean I didn't destroy my body over and over again just to help others. The boy frowned as the girls beside him hugged him even further as he said, Thanks guys, I really needed that. The traitor was in his civilian clothes. His chest had a large cut on it courtesy of a blade. He apparently also had frostbite and burns and limping awkwardly due to heavy impact. He was bleeding heavily from his head. His emerald green eyes were still in shock as he still didn't get why everyone he knew from 1A and 1B in addition to some heroes pounced on him at his mother's front door of all places. He was only thankful that he managed to take them to the forest of the park to avoid damage. If there was a good thing that came out of this, it was the fact that he activated float, danger sense, and smoke screen, but even that didn't help him when Shinso brainwashed him. The boy looked to his side and saw both classes looking at him with anger, so he stopped saying, I just want to say one thing. He looked at them with eyes shining with disappointment. When the truth comes out, don't come back begging me for forgiveness because I'm ain't giving it to anybody this time around. He was then smacked by an agent of the HPSC urging him to move. Back Hugo yelled, shut the fuck up Deku. This is the end of the road for you. Don't talk as if you have the moral high ground, you damned filthy traitor. Hiroshima even exhausted after having his ass kicked by the green-haired boy grabbed back Hugo. Come on Baku bro. It's over. Kendo from the side said, he's right. Midoriya has been taken down. The traitor has been caught there's no need to be this angry. Tonight, we party like kings. We finally took the one who put our lives in danger so much. We deserve it. Everyone agreed with her. Ibarra added, It's sad that all the acts of kindness Midoriya displayed were just a ruse to help him worm his way into our hearts. It's a good thing that our teachers warned us about him, so he can't trick us anymore. It was two months since both teachers' classes warned them about Izuku being the Yua traitor. Well, Aizawa warned. Vlad outright told his students to beat him up if he ever tried to talk with them. It only took one talk with Kendo and the boy knew that he wasn't welcome in 1B. Vlad came up to both classes with Aizawa who had his arm in a makeshift sling from his scarf with Shinso by his side. Good work kid. We managed to take you. A S traitor. You all earned a week's worth of vacation for your efforts. The huge man announced as Aizawa turned to Shinso. And Hitoshi, the boy looked at him with curiosity, welcome to class 1A. The boy cheered as everyone was celebrating the defeat of the traitor and the new member of the hero course, but it only took one month to know how much they all fucked up royally. Izuku looked at Discord. What is the evidence that incriminated me as the traitor? I mean Aizawa-sensei wouldn't just have jumped the gun like that unless he wanted to expel me to put Shinso in my place. The boy finished as his teacher hoped that he had some good reasons. 
Discord shrugged, your notebooks. He found them laying around. He looked into them and saw the various weakness you wrote about. And they can be taken advantage of. And that's when he was convinced that you were the traitor even though he saw the improvement notes on how to avoid such weakness. He chucked off to smokescreen you used to cover your tracks in addition to that he read your file and found that you were quirkless till the entrance exams. So he thought that you got your quirk. From AFO, the man was now full-on mad laughing at how OFAS 9th user was accused of being his minion. And Blackwhip didn't certainly help, but the main cause was the notebooks. The nighttime hero was currently sulking in the corner wondering how a simple notebook was all that he needed to accuse his student. Such a horrible crime, and to make it worse, he didn't go to Nezu. No, he went directly to HPSC who was looking for a way to make Izuku their newest Lady Nagant. So they provided, even more, fake evidence. Lady Nagant swore silently under her breath. Damned leeches, they won't stop at anything to cling to power. So how was the boy freed from this sticky situation? Izuku added, the better question is, where's All Might? I mean he would have supported me. Discord bit his lip. Well, in most about 80% of worlds where you're accused All Might doesn't. But in this one he does, Izuku's face fell as he just heard that from every 10 worlds. Only in two is All Might on his side with the hero having the same expression. All Might then bowed in front of his successor. Young Midoriya, no words will ever display how sorry for what those versions of myself did. You're my successor and I fully believe in you. Izuku smiled softly at the hero as he stood up from between the two girls and walked toward All Might, hugging as he said, Thanks All Might, you'll always be my hero. He then went to his place. Nezu meanwhile looked at Aizawa. Aizawa, if you ever conduct such an investigation and take it to the HPSC with such flimsy evidence or tell your class before being sure of the details, I'll make sure that your body will never be found since I read Midoriya's notebooks and they're full with ways to counter said weakness. The mammal stopped a limit adding. Wait that version 2 had ways to do that, but you and the others decided to ignore it, so make sure to behave. A lot of truths have been revealed to me today, and I hope I don't. Find out more. The man shivered and so did the other teachers since they knew the threat was for them all not just to Aizawa. Itsuka asked, did anyone at least argued for his side? Discord sadly shook his head. No one gave him the benefit of a doubt. All believed the flimsy evidence. Even people like Achako, Tenya, Shoto, and Tsuyu stopped talking to him fully believing that he was nothing than a villain in disguise. He then looked at Nagant answering her earlier question. Nezu intervened. He had a few favors to cash with the prime minister who allowed the boy to have a session with Tsukachi who announced his innocence an hour after being tortured for an entire month and surviving under a racerhead's watch no less. The hero deflated even more, and of course, the HPSC sacrificed some of its officials to save itself from scandal. Discord called his hands, alright, let's move forward, shall we? Five months later inside a hospital, a loud yell of pain could be heard followed by a slap inside a room. Izuku was sitting on a bed as Melissa was attaching his new right arm. The arm was made from the strongest metal forged with the boy's DNA to allow Blackwhip to funnel through it. Basically, the girl made it so that it would be as if his arm never disappeared. By his side were three children, Iri, Koda, and a boy with black hair. The boy was known other than Tamura Shigaraki who thanks to Iri's quirk was reverted to a child at the request of Izuku to be given a new chance in life. Tamura grumbled, so now I'm giving to be raised to love heroes. Fine, just fucking fine. The man began to scratch his neck as Himiko smacked him on the back of the head. Just be happy you didn't go to jail. I bet he sent me to the funny farm. Discord laughed. True enough, but he does visit you every two days, and you're making a quick recovery, so you can join society on your own terms. Himiko smiled satisfied. Kaminari asked. That's sweet and all, but why was Midoriya having a new arm placed? And how was his original one destroyed, to begin with? Kaminari knew it had something to do with what happened at first, but hoped it didn't. Discord replied, well remember the Jaku hospital event, he nodded, well after it, Izuku went hunting for FO on his own with the aid of All Might, but at one point he began to ignore his body demanding some rest, something happened that, caused him to relax, and reconnect with All Might after leaving him for a while before he found the base of FO launching a surprise attack and taking them out alone only to then travel the country with the aid of a reformed Kirajiri after Shimakura regained control of his body hunting criminals. When he stopped, at last, his right arm kinda shriveled and fell off from the abuse it suffered, so All Might requested Melissa to help him, and the girl came to his aid. Kaminari nodded swallowing heavily. Melissa looked at him, stop squirming like a baby. The robotic arm is interfacing with your nervous system, so of course, it's going to hurt like a bitch. Izuku groaned, Melissa, there are children in the room. Could you filter your words? This earned him another smack from Kirajiri who said, that wouldn't have happened if you took my advice and rested. The boy rubbed the back of his head as he looked at the three children in front of him. They were everything that he had left. Sadly, his mother was killed by an enraged woman claiming that she was taking revenge for her mom who died in the Camino incident. 
He remembered his five-month hunt for F.O. He barely survived it. He remembered when he stormed the base. His memory of him connecting with all the mutants that they had from his experience of discrimination for being quirkless and taking. A hit aimed at someone who sided with him changing the tides to his favor and causing the downfall of both Spinner and some plot general. How he took care of Dabai in mere moments using a 100% smash on the villain's face while Fa Jin was active. How he gave his first kiss, regrettably, to Toga to convince her to give up and that she will live in a world which will accept her. How he managed to defeat all previous MLA generals. And finally his fight with both Shigaraki and AFO. It was only due to Tenko Shimura taking control that he managed to win and both he and Tenko made AFO into tomato sauce and after that used Uri to turn Tenko back into a child to give him the chance that he never had to begin with. The boy looked at the missed man who was starting to reform to his former self saying, I know, but I'm the new symbol of hope, so I have to carry this duty. Melissa and Aburo frowned heavily, but there was no arguing with the boy. Achako cried out, Why did he do this to himself? Why did he run himself ragged like this? Why didn't ask for our help? Or his friends? The girl realized why the boy never came to them. He was afraid that we might betray him in the middle of the fight, so he couldn't afford to trust us. That's true. Izuku, after what happened, couldn't bring himself to believe or trust any of you given how easily you all betrayed him. Even when both classes went on a mission to bring him back to school to help him relax. He defeated you all before completing his mission though. At this point, he did admit that he needed to reconnect with All Might, so that's a good thing. Shoto looked down in shame as he thought about what his friend must have gone through alone. Did he forgive us? And another question as insensitive as it may seem. How was he able to do missions with us if he doesn't trust us? Discord replied. No problem, he did. But now he just doesn't care about you guys anymore. At first, he hated you all. Then he was dejected. Then he was sad. Then he just forgot about you altogether. And make no mistake, Izuku still works with you guys. But he just couldn't do it in this matter regarding AFO. The United Alliance of 1 and 1B, currently 2 and 2B. The idea was made by both homeroom teachers in hopes of gathering both classes together to help make them into a family. But Nezu knew it was a desperate attempt to get Izuku to trust his classmate once more, but allowed it anyway. What the two buffoons according to Nezu didn't know that Izuku told him personally that the only reason he didn't leave UA was due to the fact that other schools were stretched too thin to accept newcomers even if he was the national hero. Inside the building, the students were still watching the news to hear anything about their friend, if they can call him that at this point. They all remembered when the day he was taken into custody, how they partied hard and laughed when he said that they were going to regret this. The only shame they had was explaining to Iri that her hero was a villain. Of course, the girl didn't take it too well refusing to believe them, but they knew it would take time. All this happiness and joy came to a halt one month later, when the doors were kicked open by Izuku himself, he walked toward his room in Bakugo. Tried to stop him, but with one flick from Izuku's finger and the boy was at 1B's dorms. This caused chaos to ensue as everyone wondered why he was out of prison. But All Might, Nezu, and Tsukachi came inside the dorms with a shell-shocked Aizawa telling them the truth. They could hear the drop of a pin. They felt their world shatter. Some wailed. Some refused to believe that they basically betrayed their friend. Some had panic attacks, while others fainted on the spot. They then saw Izuku carrying a bag full of his notebooks and his words will haunt them forever. I guess our friendship was all ink and paper since this was all that it took for you guys to betray me. If it was you, I would have fought to prove you innocent. He then went out with All Might to visit his mother's grave who they heard was killed in some type of revenge. Satsuna asked, does he ever you know talk to us again? Or ever believe in us? Discord shook his head. No after the betrayal, Izuku finally believes that the best way to survive is on his own and with the least amount of companions possible. It didn't help that second over there was whispering things such as an efficient hero doesn't depend on others bullshit in Izuku's mind. It took some while with All Might insisting, but he eventually saw a therapist. Kaminari asked, Okay, just a question, how was actually the traitor in that world? Discord smiled and said, You won't believe who it was. It was someone who was laying in plain sight. It was. He pointed his finger at Kaminari, You. The boy was shocked that he was the traitor. What? I would never work for them I swear. The boy defended himself as Discord made him shut up. I know, you aren't here in this world, but in that one you are. In fact, this is one of the few where there isn't a traitor, but the League gets their info when they hacked in U.S. mainframe. He looked at Midnight who blushed. Stop opening random websites, woman. Kaminari asked. Why did I work for them in the first place? His answer was an imitation of his way mode making the boy frown since he sold himself for a better quirk. So you looked at the others in the room, so how are we going to address this? Midoriya is living with us against his will. And every time we talk to him, he ignores our existence or replies politely before excusing himself to do something. The frog girl was one of the most affected when the truth was revealed as she spent an entire night crying in her room. And it didn't help when Izuku was destroying himself for the sake of stopping Shigaraki. 
Hiroshima sighed. I heard news from. All Might that his new arm was put in its place. But it will only be temporary till Iri can use her quirk on a certain part of the body instead of all of it. The mood was sobered. Everyone was still reeling in from the investigation, the war, and finally Izuku's current predicament. Kirishima laughed. Do you remember the night we attacked him? How he was asking why we're attacking him? Everyone looked at him. For a moment, I thought he was innocent. I told myself that he wouldn't betray us. But I steeled myself. He looked at his hand. I guess I won't live up to Crimson Riot's name. He was hugged by Mina. Kendo was silent the entire time. The ex-president of 1B mostly avoided him these days. Not because she hated him, but out of shame. She used to train with him and saw his notebooks and what was written in them. But she was swept in the river of fear and nervousness. She looked at what was supposed to be Ibarra's and Pony's seats. The girls once the truth came left the hero course unable to believe that they were fit to be heroes after this. Last thing she heard was that Ibarra was now studying human rights to start a charity to help quirkless kids. Kids with villainous quirks and weak quirks, while Pony was studying to become an animal doctor in her country. How I wish I had half their courage, Ibarra said. If it happened once, it will happen again. This version of myself made a very wise choice of leaving the hero course. I can't disagree with her. She then felt Izuku rub his head against her making her blush before returning it. The boy told her, I don't agree with you. I think that she would have still made a good hero. Some bad choices don't make a bad person. It's what you do after that. That defines who you are. He then looked at Itsuka who was visibly sad. Don't feel bad, Itsuka. What happened there won't happen here. He then kissed her on the nose making both blush. Kamakiri was hugging his legs. What can we do? We can't force him to listen to us. He accepted our apology, but at the same time moved forward with his life and left us all behind. He just doesn't care about us anymore. He then saw Monoma opening his mouth causing him to shout. Shut the fuck up you bitch. It's because of your big mouth that his mother was killed. The blonde boy visibly recoiled remembering how he leaked info that Izuku was the traitor in hopes of making Wana look bad. Everyone looked at the blonde who was staring with horror as he felt a presence above him. The boy looked to see Vlad with a vein on his forehead throbbing heavily. I hope that you won't do something like that. The boy nodded his head while he felt dirty glares thrown at him. Itsuka grabbed him by the scruff of his shirt. If you ever do shit like this, your head won't remain on your shoulders, am I clear? The boy nodded as Kendo satisfied went back and snuggled with Izuku. Satsuna said, How about we make an analysis book about all our quirks and give it to him? I'm sure he might remember the good old times. The girl suggested. She was one of the hardest people trying to get on his good side along with Ida, Momo, Achako, Shoto, Suyu, Nito, and surprisingly Bakugo of all people. The girl still remembered when she was bummed out after her sound defeat at the hands of Bakugo. Izuku came and cheered her up. But when he needed someone to cheer him up, she ignored him. She still had nightmares about how he looked after the Jaku raid. This paired with the death of Majestic her mentor made a deep hole in her chest. Achako shook her head, it won't work. The Midoriya doesn't need something like this. It will only make this worse. The girl has long stopped calling him Deku given that the boy stopped responding to it. Now, she uses Midoriya hoping one day to be able to use that name again. Bakugo opened his mouth but was silenced by Mina, don't Bakugo. We want ways to make him talk to us, not ignore us even more. A vein throbbed on the boy's forehead as he asked. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? His hands began to sparkle as small explosions escaped from them, but everyone mostly ignored him trying to find a solution for their problem causing him to yell. I asked a question. Gyro yelled back. It fucking means that we don't want his bully's help. You've been bad-mouthing him since the start of school. Attacked him ever since we started on the first day. And then on the night of the provisional license exam, you tried to kill him because you thought he was a villain. The girl began to sob. I should have known the moment Aizawa sensei said that you're a major witness that this investigation was bullshit. The girl was still dealing with the fact that Kaminari, her boyfriend at the time, was the traitor. Gyro scoffed. Of course, the world where I was dating Jamming Dold, he's the traitor. Kaminari hugged her from behind saying, Well, how about we date since there is no traitor in our world? The boy hoped his other crush would accept him. But Kayuka shrugged him off as she looked at Izuku with longing eyes. Midoriya, you bastard. Having all the girls to yourself, at least share some with us. Bakugo went unexplainably silent as a tear rolled down his eye as he said, Don't you think I know that already? He was my friend, but I always treated him badly to serve my ego. I wish I was a better person altogether. But at this point, it can't be helped I just want to bring my old friend back from the dead. The boy sniffled quietly as Mina cried herself. Shouji then replied, I feel horrible. Every day, I see him running through the country to help mutants. Last week, he went to a village and stopped an attack on a mutant family. He arrested a huge number of the creature rejection clan. Instead of me being beside him, I mostly sidelined because he can't bring himself to trust me. Shinso, the entire time sat quietly. 
When Aizawa told him that they found that Izuku was the traitor, he laughed in his mentor's face. He couldn't help but laugh at what he thought what was a good joke at the time. But when he saw that the man was serious, he argued back. Even when he went on the mission, he wasn't sure of it. I really don't want to push it with him. We already did enough damage. I think that we should just move on with our lives. Shinzo nodded. Yes, that would be the wisest route of action. We broke his trust in us. This isn't something that you expect an apology can fix. Sure he forgave us, but at the same time that doesn't mean he will hug us and everything will return to normal. I just hope we won't annoy him too much. Aizawa from the side nodded his head. The door was opened as Midoriya strolled in with Tenko and Uri by his side. The older one kneeled down and told them, Now wait here till I go remove my hero costume and we'll go to the park. He stood up to go to his room, but Tenko tugged his pants. He looked down at the black-haired boy who asked him, Can I get a dog? I want a corgi. Please, big brother. Izuku ruffled his hair as he said, You got it. The two children cheered as they had what they were they wanted for weeks. Achako smiled as she went to them. But once Tenko saw he hid behind Uri given that he was four and still not used to new people, and the fact that Uri told him that they were bad people didn't help ease his worries. Hey guys, I heard that you're going to the park. Mind if I tag along? Uri frowned as she said in a cold voice, Yes, I do mind. Now, leave my brothers alone. Achako chuckled awkwardly. Well, it seems that Uri doesn't like me there. Not that I can blame her. She looked at the chaos being. Is there a point where he actually returns to treating us normally? Discord nods. In the 10-year reunion, you all finally understand what he wanted, so he begins to accept you back into his life. The girl beams but Discord shoots her down. At that point, he married Himiko and had twins with her knowing at least she won't backstab him. The girl in question was squealing in happiness. I married Izu. That's so awesome, and I had kids with him. She looked at the boy, but the two girls with him shoot her down instantly. No. The girl pouted as she said, Meanies. Tamura looked at Izuku and said, Thanks for the dog, golden boy. I really like Corgis. Achako deflates as Mina comes to her aid. Kamiri, don't be so cold. We just want to have fun with you guys. The little girl glared at her still remembering how she bragged about burning Izuku's right arm with her acid. At this point, Tenko was close to tears as he hugged Uri. But then their salvation came as Izuku exited the elevator fully dressed. The boy then went to the children and said, Ready to have a day full of fun. The two nodded their heads as Izuku went to call Aburo to open a portal for him. But Toru asked him, Hey, Midoriya, do you think we can go and have fun with you guys? You know have a whole class picnic. The boy stared at her before answering, No, I don't think so, but have a fun day guys. A portal erupted as Izuku walked through it with the kids leaving the dumbfounded class behind as the gravity girl began to wail in sadness. Back in the park, Tenko asked, Big brother, didn't you tell me that you should forgive people when they hurt you, so hate won't blind you? Tamura smiled. Yeah little me call him out on his hypocrisy. See for yourself how the hero society is all nothing but empty words. His mouth was then stuffed with a meat bun from Mr. Compress who said, Quite now, we want to see what he will say. The only question on the Decay user's mind was, Where the fuck did he get the meat bun to begin with? Little brother, remember when I told you that trust is as fragile as glass? The little boy nodded. Well, they broke my trust. Until this day they don't get that they can't fix what was shattered to a million pieces. Even though, they apologized on some level they still they that what they did was right. They forget the most important thing about a hero. It is to save people whether be it a villain or victim. The boy rubbed his hair. The day that understand that things can't go to normal like it was, and try to earn my trust back then I'll be nice to them or talk with them more often. The little boy nodded as he went to play with Yuri. Aizawa commented, wise words. He's not wrong though. I think that the only reason he forgave them was that the hate was too much. I think that they thought that with the apology that everything will be fine going on forward. But forgot that Midoriya doesn't trust them anymore. I think that for things to return to normal, the kids have to acknowledge that things will never go to normal right away, and it will need time. Discord smiled. Well, that's the gist of this world, so opinions.